And now, your mama knows. Gentlemen, welcome to the, the Mighty Jade Empire podcast. I'm DJ Just Love. To my left, we got John B. Washington. To my lower left, we got Mike. And we got Mr. Mysterious below me. Eat a message. Black Dragon 7 9 to. What about my rapper's name, Eda Magnificent? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm not calling you that. Ever. ever. I'll call you Easy E. Ever, ever. No, that, that's, that's <laughs> excuses, Eddie. So what's going on, fellas? How's your weekend so far? Uh, my weekend. Um, well, we start with the man at the top. He was always working on weekends, Actually, Mr. John B. Washington. How was your weekend, John? Oh, I, my weekend was good. I didn't work this weekend. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Today's my day off. Well, yesterday and today my day off. But then I worked this whole week. I only have off Friday. That's what's up. Yeah. Good chilling. Just working. COVID's much better. They're Feeling trying better? to move. Yeah, they're trying to move most of the COVID patients out of uh, Hopewell and over to regional, something with funding or something or the other with, with FEMA. Okay. Something with the government. I forgot what. I was like, all right, whatever. Regional over on Brunswick uh, Avenue? Yeah. They move them over there. Move most of the patients over to there. So, it sounds they like that's quieting down. And it is. Uh, not really. <clears throat> it's quite not. We wait for a little distraction to pass, right? We have seen from the news I've been watching, we have seen spikes in states that have reopened. Yep, there's going to be spikes in states that reopen, Over 20, especially with the protests, the people states. walking around. It's like... And here's the thing. <laughs> Don't get distracted by the protests and the rioting as related to COVID. Because what's going to happen mm -hmm. is we're going to see these spikes in these states where they've reopened of 20,000 cases a day. And they're going to say, oh, it's because of the protests and the rioting. Um, no, it's because you guys opened up. In about seven more days, that's when we'll see the spikes from the protests. Correct. So the spike right now is from opening up. Yeah. In about sometime next week by the weekend, by next week is when you start to see more if it's a true spike because of the protest. Then they can blame the protest. It takes yeah. about two weeks. Yeah, you gotta think it's been about two weeks now since Memorial Weekend. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do shit, so I guess we in the clear. Because we're the smart ones. <laughs> no. <the> brave one. <laughs> I ain't that brave because I walk into the rooms. I don't I treat every single solitary patient. As if they got COVID, <clears throat> for the simple know. fact that supposed to. for the simple fact that you got these people that are walking in. Part of the part of the triage when you ask people what's going on with them and why they're there. One of the last questions that they ask them is if they have any medical conditions that we should be aware of. And oh, by the way, yeah, I'm COVID positive. Wow. Yeah. Got stabbed. So I told. Them, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I told the nurses that are up in triage because I was up there one day and I was like, "What?" And I treat I wear my mask no matter what. Right. So I told the nurse and I was like, "Yo, I said you need to change your your way of questioning." And the first question you need to ask is, "Is there any chance that you COVID positive?" And I told my charge nurse and they told the boss. They were like, "You know what? That's what we're going to lead with because right, people they they just." They lose focus on all the little minute things. They're quick to bring up the current uproar that everybody's in, but forget those are other aspects of, you know, your health and everything. And they just get lost in the mix. And oh yeah, by the way, and it's like, dude, come on. <clears throat> we should said that first. Anymore. Yeah, like I'll come out and tell them. I'm like, you supposed to leave with that. Hmm. And the nurse will look at me. I'm like, look, at the end of the day, I want to go home. You want to go home. This patient want to go. Right. Point blank. 
Sorry for being late. I didn't get the notification from Discord. That's it. Kick him out. Kick him out. Kick him out. No, that's all good. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Not much. Out of Delaware just... treating you. Not in Delaware yet. Still self quarantining. <laughs> Got another Damn, couple days. Damn, big forehead, bro. Shut up, man. Like, you look down. I was like, damn. You sure you ain't balding? And that's just like, <laughs> no, I'm not, no, like, I'm not balding. <laughs> not it, it balding. Looked like, no, I know that it looked like it. It looked like a brother. <laughs> just, hey, hey. I'm just calling out how I see it. Just saying. Look, look. We, we all can go through your Facebook pictures and see when your hairline is closer, a little bit closer to your eyebrows. <laughs> now, it look like that shit is running away. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, this is how I look as far as balding goes. At the end of the day, you black, you can work, you can hell, you can rock that shit. Exactly. Even you lumps. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call you lumps. <laughs> you think mm. the there you go. <laughs> just kill Mike's whole self esteem. Right? <laughs> just, just, just like that. Yeah, I'm about to just put a nail in the coffin. You're like, yeah, you might as well just get. I should just get. Fuck you, BB. <laughs> Good, Mike. Don't let that boy fuck you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, as Mike shades to black, we uh like to introduce Julian. What's up, man? Not much. Literally just, I was working on some D&D stuff earlier. My game got canceled today, so. Ooh, here. Why are you still quarantining <laughs> Julian, because I worked at McDonald's and I didn't want to take a chance uh, getting my aunt and my mom and my brother sick when I finally do move in with them. Better oh, safe so than took, sorry. You took a whole two weeks off. Technically, yeah. Sweet, smart move, smart move. Okay. Yeah, but uh, that's that's about it. I've just been chilling, honestly. That's what's up. Who's mm-hmm. that little green square? Franco. That Frank's in the building. Yeah. What's up, y'all? Hey. What up, Frank? Julian, can you hear me? Y'all hear me clear? Yeah, we can hear uh, you. Let me check. Yes, sir. Thank you. Just give me one second. Let me know if I'm tripping or not. Has anybody been outside? Yeah, right for you. Yes. Yep, I just came inside. First time glass, I get my skin melted off. Shit kind of sucks. Uh, Justin actually oh, cannot hear you on stream. Like at all? At all. Hold on a second. It is so gorgeous out. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a nice breeze. Yes, my windows is open. How about now, Julian? It's only 79 out. It's going to be 50 tonight. So I'm going to my windows tonight. Julian, can you hear me on screen now? Yeah. <clears throat> now Julian went mute just now. Oh. You're really quiet. God damn it. Julian, you ate your dinner? Mike Tech. What was that? Two, Are you Mike hungry again? One, two. Not yet. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me let me oh, help Justin with this real quick. Sorry. <laughs> Not you, Julian. The others. <laughs> Mike Tech, one, two, Jules. Can you hear me? Yeah, no, you're you're real quiet, Justin. Yeah, you are quiet. <laughs> Mike check one two. Mike check one two. I'm hearing you just fine. Let me turn you up, Justin. Well, Not on Discord, just on the stream. Discord. Like you can hear me in the stream, Gene. Yeah, no, you're you're real quiet, I'm Justin. Not, I'm not watching the stream right now because I ain't watching. Yeah, you are quiet. Check one two. Mike check one two. I'm hearing hey. you just fine. Let me turn you up, Justin. I ain't coming from the stream. Yeah, Discord, just on the stream. Like, you can hear me in the stream, Gene? No, you're, you're real quiet, Justin. I'm not watching the stream right now, because I ain't watching the stream. Yeah, you know what I mean? I sound better now. I can hear myself. You're going to whatever you guys are doing. I ain't coming from the stream. Discord, just on the stream. You can hear me in the stream, Gene? Yeah, you're real quiet, Justin. Yeah, I think it's weird. You're coming perfect. You're coming through perfectly fine on Discord, but it's very quiet on stream. I am too loud on stream. Yeah, you seem loud on stream. <laughs> you might want to go with it. Well, we, you can turn his ass down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm the quiet as well. I don't know why I sound so loud. Like, yeah, yeah. fix that. 
Yo, I had to, on a side note, <clears throat> I had to report this. You know how you get into them, them, um, people send you like group messages for, for nonsense? Right. Uh, way somehow, some person that's not even my friend included me in some group message. I guess he, no, it wasn't even in the tower, but he included me in some message. And dude was like, oh, you, know, you, you cunt, you fucking nigger. I was like, what? Wow, what? What was that like on Facebook for? Yeah, like straight put it in the, the message, in the PlayStation message. And I reported that shit to PlayStation. Oh, oh they will definitely do something about that quickly. That I included the message, shit, I included the screenshot of the message, everything. And this came about why? Because you were playing Destiny, he lost to you or something? I was just no, not. It was just a, a group message, because it was a message about the um the event. That's why it was a message about the event. Somebody had sent it, and they were like, "Oh, they said something dumb about it." Hold on, let me. I'm going to my messages right now. I don't understand. Like, unless you have an actual picture of yourself that people that aren't on your friends list can see, how do people even know to even call you that? If if you're even black. Hold on a second. Can y'all uh back up a little bit because I got a phone call and jacked up my sound. Now I'm just kind of jumping in. What's going on? What's up, Frank? What's up? Huh? Uh, Justin, sound a little bit better, so a little quiet, but... <sighs> yeah, I turned my mic up on my soundboard. Sound I'm hoping it helps. And, and BB was telling us about the guy who huh? just jumped in his PlayStation chat. I got I gotta turn some people down because I can barely hear you. I have a bunch of y'all loud as hell for some reason. This is the party chat or inbox. Oh, mate, PlayStation deleted the message from my my thing, but I got a screenshot of it. So what happened? Let me see. Hold on. Somebody called him. It wasn't just me. It was they were calling somebody. I don't know who. It wasn't. I don't think it was directed at me. Because I, I don't never reply in those damn messages. I never reply in them. Some random stranger included him in a group message calling someone else a nigger. Oh, nice. Damn it. I don't, I don't have it on my PlayStation. I have it on my phone. I got a Discord question. So, on oh, one of y'all, it looks like I have a muted... Oh, never mind. It's, it's gone. What was that? That's oh, I guess you had muted me. I uh, muted myself. <laughs> oh, you muted yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go get that little microphone and someone mutes themselves. I usually throw that yeah. out there when everybody's debating and talking so that way they don't get any background noise from me. Especially after last week when I was taking the garbage out. <laughs> by, take, by taking a I do it just so I do it to shit. try to limit uh, the amount of stream when I'm trying to make wow. sure everyone sounds good on stream so we don't get that uh feedback, feedback. or the, the the echo. Yeah, that's what I was looking I for. I included echo. that message in the uh in the Discord chat. Yeah, John, that's definitely a fake account. No, that's a real account. The dude had 390 something friends. We had mutual friends in there. Mutual followers. It was a legit account. He had a Destiny player. He he had triumphs and trophies and this, that, and I blocked his ass and reported him. One, nine, five, eight, seven, six. Who the fuck was he talking to? No, the, the original message, the dude was like, he said, Dude included a picture of a tower. Oh, it was a picture of the Almighty. Okay. And that was it. Some dude included a picture of Almighty. He was standing up by shacks, and that was it. The sad truth is probably some young kid, too. Well, he's some young kid. Because they like to be yeah, edgy playing seen, video games and shit. Or they think it's edgy anyway. Oh, he is actually. The guy is one of my friends. I don't know who he is. I've never, I don't remember playing with him. That Dante, whatever. 
No, no, not him, but the guy that originated the message. Because people changed their name on the PlayStation, and I don't know who the hell they are. And they only did that, right. that carry the, sec- the original name for like a, what, a month? Yeah, I think it was like a month. Yeah. So I don't know who the hell he is. I'm like, all right, whatever. And I'm going to presume that I haven't played with you lately because I don't know the name. Although, <laughs> that reminds me, I got to go purge some of my uh, uh, friends list stuff from the PlayStation because I don't fucking know about half the people on there okay. anymore. <laughs> When can I get at the one of the group chats? I immediately bought printer ask me. What's up? Hey, Franco. Franco. Yeah, I'm here. I must say, that picture you posted, you was looking real pretty, brother. Which picture? The black man or whatever it was. Using the car. Oh, well, thank you. And clean. You was looking pretty. Thank you, thank you. That was uh, me letting my Dominican side out a little bit. <laughs> you need to help. You need to help pull head Mike out. You're looking homeless Boy, right now. Listen, Mike. Me, I, I done told Mike this over and over again years and years ago. You a grown ass man now. It's time to let that. I want to have braids go because all you doing is exposing that forehead. <laughs> That's all you, you just doing. got over that. <laughs> oh, he gonna go to don't, black now. Don't be the guy. <laughs> don't be the guy with 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 cornrows that start on the back part of your head. Post the pictures talking about hang time. You know hang time? <laughs> Close to the hang time is hanging on. That's what it is. It's trying to hang on for dear life. Looking like a Shaolin monk, huh? That's his goal. That's what you're really trying to do. He's, He's trying to, to grow that ponytail and have that shaved forehead yep. in the front. Yeah. Mm. Like this. Looking like Samuel L. Jackson from Look, 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 Jackson forehead Brown. goes so so far back that if he joined the military, he would salute like this. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, the forehead started back there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mike, don't sit there with the face like you don't know we talking about you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So uh Why you think Mike G- forehead G- Mike G- forehead G- look like his kneecap after they shaved down the bone spurs. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> you couldn't even hide that one. You couldn't deny that one. That was good. That's not a damn. That's a goddamn. He tried to hold that in. He knew what it was. He knew what time it was. I hate y'all. So how I love you the like fact that you hate me. me. Yo, <laughs> my D is doing a whole lot better. I ain't trying to jump rope right. or nothing, but I'm doing better. That's Amen good. to that, sir. That's what's up. I think my goal for next year is to actually, I want to try to at least jump off of at least about like three feet and see if I make a sturdy landing. Mm. You better be careful, bro. Or, you know, your goal, your goal could just be to walk comfortably without pain. Yes. That's because... don't, don't fucking push push the, the envelope and you don't have to. Exactly, bro. Mike, we are at Mike that age now. <laughs> you, what up, Trill? What up, Trill? What up? Hey, yo, hey, yo Mike. Believe it. I see you out here rocking the same haircut as me, dog. <laughs> He's homeless. He's homeless. If you were smart, you wouldn't show yourself. BB's on the roll. La da dee, la do da. Oh my god. <laughs> Your head just like me. You look homeless. Look homeless. Got this big old head. Now the only thing I can talk to. about is Destiny. I can't talk about PS5 because I ain't looked up enough. I don't want to be disappointed. I want to be pleasantly surprised. I'm still gonna buy one no matter what. If I know I don't me, watch I'm not gonna buy one until a game I want comes out for it. Same. Yeah. That's what I did with PS2, 3, and 4. I'm, on. Uh, I'm not going so I'm not gonna kinda, push it up though. That's kind of the same thing with me. I usually don't get the next gen system for the first few months. Or at least until something I really, really want when it comes out. Oh yeah. And I, and it, like like honestly, I think I got my PS4 when um, uh, what was it came out? God of War, right? 
No, 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 no. God of War. I have PS4 before God of War. I ain't getting my PS4 until Destiny drops. <laughs> I bought the same out. Oh, Infamous. I bought my PS4 when Infamous came. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that was, that was so damn good. Okay, yeah, it's around. That was actually what got me my PS4. And then I, um, that's what got me my, uh, yeah. That's what got me my, my PS4. And then I got the God of War one. When God of War came out, I got my Pro. Okay. So I had the regular PS4, and then they were dropping God of War, and I was like, hey, here's the reason for me to actually get a Pro, because they have a special limited edition one. And that's why I got my PS4 Pro. So I, although I definitely want the PS5, and I'm going to get it, I don't rush to get them unless it's, you know, absolutely something coming out. Now, they released some crazy shit for Destiny as soon as PS5 come out. And I have to have a PS5 to do it, then that'll be my PS5 to go for. I just hope it ain't some costly bullshit to go from one system to the next. <coughs> like I better it's not have to pay more than bills. thirty dollars. I can't say a system being no more than five hundred dollars, and hopefully games won't start won't be ninety dollars moving forward. No, that's not oh, you talk- the price of games themselves aren't gonna change. I can't see that happening. Um what I'm saying. I mean, over like, time they go up a little bit at a time, but inevitably, just, they're not going to jump up no fucking hundred bucks. No, yeah, one, out of nowhere. One last night, the price of games went up. Well, that went, actually, though, the price of games hasn't gone up for years. Like there was a time when they were forty nine, and this was like up until the late nineties, and then they finally went up to sixty, to fifty nine, like, and they've been stuck at fifty nine. Video game prices don't change. Very much. The only time that the real fluctuation was the Nintendo 64, just because cartridges are more expensive to produce. So yeah, you'd run into that seventy or eighty dollar 64 cartridge. Look, I think Mario 64 was like what, almost eighty dollars when that shit, when that shit it came out. It might have been something like seventy bucks at least. Yeah, when he first seen that shit. Yeah. But Nintendo 64 I feel like, cartridges they cost more. I feel like I was paying like. 49 bucks for games all the way until PS4 came out. And I don't remember, I don't remember jumping up to 60 bucks until PS4 came out. I could be wrong. Nah, they was, they well, like, not- until PS4 and Xbox One, I feel like they, it went up that 10 bucks after, like, three generations or whatever. Mm. I was going to say, like, around when PS3 dropped. Yeah, it no, went- I think, yeah, games went up. The I, I, only reason I really remember is that because I was working at Blockbuster at the time, and, uh, it was a big deal because at the time it was Blu-ray versus HD DVD, and it was PS3 mm. versus Xbox 360. Oh yeah, isn't that was going to win that, that particular war? And uh, Blu-ray came out on top. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, that's when, if I remember correctly, it's around that time that's when video games went up to about sixty bucks a pop. Yeah, because I remember them easily being forty. Yeah, but yeah. Was on, those were the days. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as far as PS5 goes, game. like, don't get me wrong. Well, like, I don't, I'm, I'm on the fence about getting a PS5 for Destiny specifically. Bungie already came out and said that they are definitely releasing it on the PS5, like full on, not just play the PS4 version on the PS5. And I assume. It's going to be optimized for the PS5, so like less loading, like you know how when you load into your character's like uh, management screen and that shit takes forever. That's why. So they gonna rise to iron it. (laughs) 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 I'm not even sure I want to get the next Destiny expansion. (laughs) Oh, I'm not even talking about Destiny three. I'm just talking about. Destiny two on the PS5. Uh, fuck Destiny three. I'm talking about the Fallen expansion. You talking about, about what? Destiny, but, I definitely, PS5. but I definitely would not say. Uh, I'm only gonna get the PS5 when it comes out if I have the. No, nah, even fuck that. I'm only gonna buy it when I get the money for it and comfortably have the money for it. Well, if the so PS5 is, 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 is the PS5 allow me to play PS4 games, I just trade my pro win call it a day. Oh no, they said that from the rip. That might help. I'm not going to get a PS5 until everyone else makes a PS4. Yeah. 
So, so y'all who want to be first adopters, please go at it. Beta yeah. test it for me. Find all the bugs and glitches so they can fix it and update. No, I feel like we know more about to say. We'll we'll learn more about all that shit when they eventually have that presentation they delayed. Yeah, that's what they put what this week, wasn't it? Or last it week? Got canceled. Must be a due couple days ago. To, uh, a crisis <laughs> happening in America. You, you know what? You know what? I don't. It was a smart decision. The only reason why yeah, I would no, get I the original that. one. The only reason why we get the original one is because you remember when play what was it PlayStation three or four when they originally the very first one that they rolled out before they rolled it back they had backwards compatibility. Oh yeah, the PS three, the big the big body PS three, yeah. but it was yeah. only it was only a certain one of that one. A lot of people yeah. forgot because remember it came in like three uh, memory sizes. And, and we, it was only a, one memory size was backwards compatible all the way back to old PlayStation. Game. Yep, that, and I'm that, afraid that that'll happen again. And all of, the vast majority of the time, when they have those types of glitches and stuff that they have to update with the systems, it's all just software updates. None of the hardware mm-hmm. actually changes. The only reason why they t- they stopped the backwards compatibility with the PS3 was because it was just an added extra expense. Yeah, that's and people weren't because they right. were putting physical PS2 parts in PS3s, and that shit was expensive. And then by the time I bought a PS3, they moved from the physical parts to emulation. And when they moved to emulation, that created issues in some games. Like the original PS3s, mm. almost every PS2 game worked. In yep. my version, I played I PS3 when they came out with the Metal Gear Solid bundle, and uh, it was emulation, and it was funny as shit because you would put in um, Tekken Tag, and that shit would play like it was underwater. <laughs> yeah. them doing well, that I can, re- it played. I can profess it that. played, but everyone moved real slow. <laughs> I can say without a doubt that that one that was backwards compatible originally was the shit. And it was it was the only PS3 I had until it finally died, and I ended up getting a Slim for God of War uh, Three, the Red Slim, mm. and um, I kept that one for a while because it would still kind of work. But then after it stopped working, I was like, all right, but I, I'm I might be going against the grain with everybody else, but I don't live or die by backwards compatibility for the most part. You're not You're because not I'm like. It's funny. Maybe the PS4, yeah, but PS3, I won't play a PS3 game now, so why would I play it just because I got a PS5? I almost feel like the whole backwards compatibility issue, it's almost a gotcha question at this point. It, like, they come at developers, like, or not even like OEMs, like um, Sony and Microsoft, and they're like, oh, is this going to have backwards compatibility? If it doesn't, it might be a problem, yada, yada, yada. But if you look at the real numbers, it's like some shit like 1.3% of people actually play their old games. It's like mad low. Like the percentage like, is dumb low of people yeah, who like, actually do it. Everybody wants the shit. Everybody like wants the shit. Yeah. But the number of people that actually lo- use it is like dumb low. Well, again, they don't necessarily want it to actually use it. They just yeah, want it to. The they just want it for the option. It, the odds are you're probably just not going right. to. Right, like, folks. I got an Xbox One X, right? And I have yet to play an Xbox 360 game or an OG Xbox game on it. But I had the option. Gee, you, you don't even you don't even play current Xbox games on it. Xbox. <laughs> yes, I do. No, you don't. You talk I'll about how your Xbox time. X One is a waste of money all the time. I play Forza all the time. You play my Xbox. You played Forza all the time <laughs> when you bought it. When's the last time you booted up Forza? <laughs> you don't freak on see my face, face Eugene. You see my face, face, Eugene. Hey, your face is a meme. All the conversations we have about you with Xbox, not never once have I heard you playing that game actively. I believe you once told me that it was a glorified paperweight. You also once told me it was a glorified like like a. Uh, what was it, 4K player? You told me it was just, a, oh, I only use it to stream. And I can acknowledge that you are a I, Sony I, I, fan and you just happen to have an Xbox One because you came up on it some kind of way where it was a deal. Just, just say that. Yeah, I was looking for a 4K Blu ray player and that was the best option. I was going to say, because weren't you the same guy comparing it to Stadia a week ago? Oh, no. Man, what the heck is that? <laughs> 
Oh. Hey, listen, let me just put this out there, too, since like somebody it. mentioned Stadia, right? Oh, I just want to put this out there for Stadia, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going and and to leave it right there. So, for the record, I am not against Stadia. I don't dislike it. I don't hate it. The bottom line is, is it has no impact on how I game. It's not, it doesn't interest me, and I am not among the supposed haters in our group of Stadia. Oh, you just can't force feed me some shit that I don't want. Facts. No, I'm, I'm right there with you. My opinion, I, you know what, let's do that. I have a pretty singular opinion of Stadia. As you said, Franco, don't hate it, don't dislike it. It doesn't move the needle for me either way. And my only real issue with it is that it's solely reliant on a unreliable resource. Like, the internet is an unreliable utility. Until we get to the point where the internet is like 100% all the time, then you can't say Stadia is as great as you might think it is. Because at the end of the day, it's only going to be as good as your internet. It's true. Facts. In my conversations with people, the only person that has a genuine opinion of it is Anthony. Everybody else is uh, like, it's all right. It's the and same. even his his opinion is jaded. Yeah, this is more of a I just want my I just want my purchase to feel valid opinion. Remember, yeah, remember but you can play field games while I'm on a date with Stadia. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> he posted that shit. You know on what? Facebook. Let me. Let me let me jump in there instead. Like not to, to, to let's say I'm not de- not defending him, right? But his whole reasoning to keep pushing Stadia down our throats and pushing it on us, it's valid for him. Like he is somebody who, when he leaves his home to go out to dinner with his family or his wife, he wants to play video games. Or when he goes to sit in the bed with his wife to have quality time to watch TV. He wants to play video games, or when he's sitting in a room with his actual system, he wants to sit on the bed and look at his phone and play video games. That's the niche. That's why I said it's a niche home technology Speaking for a niche devil. group of people. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what that is. So for him, it absolutely is like a great system, right? Because right. it fits into the lifestyle he wants. So for me, I'm on the opposite spectrum of that. Once I leave my house, gaming doesn't even come to mind for me. And he's supposed to. Like when I when I leave out the house, if I'm going to dinner, I'm out to be social with my family or with my friends. If B, you can actually acknowledge this when I come to your house and we're all hanging out and like you might throw the game on. I'll like play it for a second. And then I'm bouncing around laughing and talking and socializing. Like, gaming is something that I do at home that's another social outlet for me to connect with y'all where we're not all together. Right. But once I'm all together with somebody, it just kind of fucking defeats the purpose of sitting there trying to play a video game and eat my dinner and hold an intellectual or just a social conversation with you. I I like eye-to-eye contact. Um, I like, you know, social interaction, you know what I'm saying? I like social interaction and, you know, not to take it too left, but if I'm laying in the bed with my girl, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to watch the fucking movie we trying to watch, or I'm trying to get them goodies. <laughs> but the fucking video game to wait. <laughs> so that's, that's how I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum of that. It doesn't fit into the lifestyle I'm trying to, to to have. Whereas Anthony, he's like, he wants to constantly be connected with gaming. And even looking at the way he games, he plays console games. He plays on the Stadia. He plays phone games. He plays internet games. Like, he plays all these different games, and that's his thing. Yeah. So, not defending him, but I yeah, understand nothing- where he's coming from with it. He just has this habit of because it really fits his lifestyle and he really loves it, that he has to make us love it. And it doesn't work, right? Because for most of us, like Justin, doesn't move the needle either way for him. Right. 
see, and he doesn't like the fact that it relies on strictly relies on internet, you know, for true. And, 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 and um, I don't know who is it, Andrew? Andrew, yeah. yeah. We you don't like it from a technical from, standpoint. Yeah, you guys are really techy. Y'all tech savvy, and for the technical standpoint, y'all don't like it. And even BB, he did research on it and said, "Hey, this is why I don't fuck with it." That should be the conversation for us as gamers. It's like, hey, you love it. Word up. I don't. In the story. Like me, like, I'll be honest with y'all. I can honestly say that I got sitting on my shelf right now seven to eight video games that I have not given a true run because I am heavily connected to Destiny. Yeah, back. I'm auto. I'm autopilot into Destiny at this point. You know what I mean? So, do I think Destiny's getting stale? Hell yeah! But it's like my automatic default is Destiny. That don't mean I when guess. other people get on here, I'm not gonna be like, "Yo, why the fuck you playing Minecraft, BB? Play Destiny." I can't, no, that's stupid. You should play Destiny. That and can I not bring? So that's kind of how I see it. That brings up a very good point. A perfect segue. Can we talk about the mind fuckery that Bungie has created within <laughs> Destiny? <laughs> because I'm not even going to front. I will go on record as saying I'll be damned if I put any more money into this fucking game. I was so sick with Season of the Worthy. To me, it was complete garbage. I barely did any of that Sheriff Tower shit. Um, I thought it was fucking terrible. And then they released that trailer of Eris Morn on Europa. Treasure do the fucking ice. Bitch. Summoning some fucking high magic ball. And, and I, I was like, yup, I'm right back in. Yo, my dick got hard. I was like, <laughs> I'm yo. like, every time I get out, you pull me right back in. I was like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> I guess this is where the benefit comes in of not having played Destiny as long as y'all, because I didn't give a shit about either of the trailers they released. I, again, I was hyped, but my hype got killed yesterday. Like all the hype that that had built up died yesterday at was, one was o'clock. In the tower for an hour and a half. Yeah, that was yeah. Because <laughs> that the real, with, the real issue with the event yesterday wasn't that it was so long. It's just they didn't tell anyone it was going to be that long. Dog, it said we gonna start this Ooh, at that's one. Where I'm coming from. I was yeah. expecting it to be one one thirty. This shit took till two thirty. And and I'll give. Bungie props because they took something that normally isn't tangible to us, like the skybox. The skybox is the skybox. We run into the tower. It's some random color. It's some random time of day. We really don't pay it any mind. So I give them credit for them to actually take the skybox and do something with it that is different and creative and basically almost interacted with the actual story but in the way it was done it was very yeah. anticlimactic so here here's my take on it and this is it's funny because i um after it was all said and done i, I seen this one little blurb about it and i was like pissed at destiny because i said you had you had a blueprint to this right and you literally tried to steal this blueprint from fortnite Right? Fortnite is a game I do not play, right? I just don't get into it. I watch my younger kids play it, but let me tell you something. That event they did with Travis Scott was phenomenal. She was fine. My kids made me stop what I was doing. They was like, Dad, Dad, Travis Scott event. Uh, I want to do it. I want to watch it. And I watched my son, Julian, with his character on Fortnite, Stand in front of this giant fucking portal, watching swirling lights for like ten minutes. And I'm like, "What is this bullshit?" <laughs> and then, as soon as Travis Scott stepped through that portal, as a fucking giant, he's performing one of my favorite Travis Scott songs, which is hilarious. Um, and he's like interacting with the world. His footsteps are are shaking the board. And he's doing different things with energy that blows the actual characters in there. And their characters were like flying through space, following Travis Scott around. Oh my so this God. was exactly the type of event. Yeah. Yo, look it up on YouTube. I mean, yeah, I'm about to like, YouTube this long. shit. You, you will literally watch it like you're watching some gangster-ass extended music video. 
and forget you're watching Fortnite. That is exactly what Destiny was trying to emulate. And instead of them saying, hey, let's emulate this the right way, they tried to like downplay it. They could have did so much with the almighty in that the, in that vein. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We could have seen the rockets hit the almighty. And it, I would have been fine waiting for an hour and a half for those rockets to hit the almighty. If once that shit fucking crashed and exploded, it took us into this whole other part of the event that was kind of like that Travis Scott event, which pulled us into it. Why aren't we flying around the board? Why aren't, you know, shit, why is this shit blowing up around us and we're actually physically moving our characters around trying to figure out what's going on? They could have did so much stuff with that. Yeah. And they okay. really dropped the I, ball At the very it, least, I and, hope it led to a mission to the crash site. Exactly. Something... And uh, for I me, will, it's unforgivable that they dropped the ball like that because they yeah, had a blueprint for it. I will come to the defense only slightly a bit because Fortnite does those live events a lot. Like there was one where they had a giant monster fight a giant robot. I watched that. It was pretty cool. Their was really engine cool. was made for stuff like that. Destiny's was not. So it's pretty good that they were able to do this. However, the, the problem was, A, like I said, I feel like if it was going to be that long, you should have told us, and B, the aftermath was... <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, it was we lackluster. Had it had the tower. And now that thing's just out there, we're like, there's nothing stopping us from going over there, Bungie. Why can't we go over there and explore it? Bro, so right. I 100% agree with Justin. I agree they with you. Been like, all right, as soon as that drone crashes, y'all go out there, y'all. You're exploring yeah. the wreckage, you're looking for shit. Like, even if like, there was nothing that major let's there, like, just, that would have been cool. For a second, let's just take it out of the realm of video games. If something that huge would have crashed land on Earth, they'd send motherfuckers to it. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, bro, like, I was I like, that like, yeah, could be I a new raid. The only thing we could do was watch it from a distance and then eventually slowly fall yeah. to Earth. Like, yeah, we, their, 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 uh, their system wasn't going to be able to do anything like Fortnite's was. It wasn't built like it wasn't built for that. But what they didn't do a good enough job with what they had for it to be really worth it. Like, in my opinion, the the minute the event started, we should have heard something. From Ana say, all right, rescue and fire is going to take a while to get there. Just be calm. I'm sure he got this. Then that happens, yeah. and boom, about to say. Then we have the event planned normally. It lands. It goes, all right, Guardians, you need to go check that out. Make sure there's nothing else, the like Cabal or something else that planted, just so it doesn't fuck us over later. Like, but no, I mean, you can take it from that down standpoint, down. but again, I still think they could have did something with it. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, like they, they do these phenomenal cutscenes, these great cinematic cutscenes, and that's right along the vein of what they did with that Travis Scott event. It yeah, we a were phenomenal we're... cutscene. I think I, this, I that. think Bungie short changed this. Go ahead, Chu, I'm sorry. But I think I Bungie short changed this one. Because we were talking about this yesterday, it was like we saw events like this in D1, like when the dreadnought came through and he wiped out a whole fucking armada. That trade yeah. was done so well. It did everything, and then we went straight to doing missions on the Dreadnought. On the Dreadnought, like, exactly. Like, that that could have been another one of them sequences where it either led to a strike, a dungeon, a raid, yeah, something. Yeah, at least a strike. A, a new strike to end the season off, get some last-minute loot, some surprise loot. Some uh, Like, it's cool we got an emblem, but hell, it should have been... That's what it should have been. Instead of seeing that little it's piece of broken tower, emblem. it should have been a mission. To... Yeah, it wasn't even exclusive. Yeah, that's that's the other thing too. You sat your ass in the tower for an hour and a half just for some shit that everybody would have got. Fuck that. If it was exclusive, it wasn't even exclusive. I I, I, honestly, I wouldn't complain if we had some exclusive emblem. Yeah, you you it literally sat there. Said you sat there and wasted an hour and a half of your life to watch this go up and then go. Okay, that's it. But the and fact then it said I, as soon as you went to orbit, it said, "Hey, by the way, dicks. if you weren't one of the dicks that sat on the tower and waited for this shit to happen, <laughs> yeah. go to the tower and, and go by Zavala and get your free emblem." Like, exactly. What? Much. Oh, and don't forget to tune in on June 9th to watch our our reveal. Um, Whatever the fuck that's gonna be. What fucking reveal? Isn't that when the new season starts? Yes, yes but they're so doing. We have literally so an hour before reset, and yep. from what I hear on Twitter, it's going to be some of because technically they haven't even released the name of the new season yet. So it's going to be it's going to be 
a dive into the new season, but it's also going to be a dive into what we're supposed to get in the fall. Because that's what the Eris Morn clip is from. That's what the Drifter going to Europa Excuse me, guys. is from. That's going to be from the fall. Hey. In that what we're getting this fall. What's up, kid? What's up? What up, Anthony? He been here for a minute. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I know, but he was like just quietly watching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I tell you, now he's being, being an asshole and quietly uh munching <laughs> fries in front of us. Thanks, Anthony. I got that. Um, I figure I try to get on here however I can pull it off. Hey, that's the job. Right up. Um, Anthony, I just want to let you know you've started a movement in my household. So, you know how I, I bought into your whole neck holder for the phone and how I love it and you love it? <laughs> Roll past five below and uh my girl was like, Yo, then you get then Anthony gets your neck holder from five below. I said, Yeah, but our five below didn't have it. But we stopped by curbside. And I just joke around, say, hey, y'all got this neck holder? And I showed him. She's like, yeah, we just got a whole bunch of them. And you want one? My girl was like, can you get it? <laughs> oh, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. Okay, internet's still up and running. Guys, can you hear me? What the hell? Anthony, just hold the damn sandwich. Hold the damn sandwich up to the camera and give me a fucking mic. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of it. That official mic. I hate you so much right now. Uh, Hold the Did you get extra cheese on it? Difficulty over here, but I'm back. I don't see those. Let's say what happened. Yeah. Oh yeah, Six Flags. Hell yeah, and they greedy too. Yeah, we just. We just got out of the safari, so we pulled over to get McDonald's. Like, oh, let me uh, jump on the car real quick. Where did you, you go? Six Flags? Uh, the safari. Yeah. The regular park isn't open yet, but the safari is. So you just got to stay in your car. Because remember, they Which got rid of highly recommend. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, no, they got rid of it, and they got the, the big trucks that everybody get on. But now, because of COVID, they went back to... Um, you could get in your car. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I only say that because I don't see videos of people getting chipped up at uh at this safari by the animals when they, they oh, decided it would be cool to roll their windows all the way down. And look, oh, look at the giraffe. It's so nice. And the giraffe like, bitch, I'll wrap my tongue around your old head. Take that <laughs> right your ass out that car. Mm-hmm. Facts. And I'm a firm believer that monkeys are are from the gates of hell. <laughs> Little a hole. some assholes. I've heard, but all right. Why you say that? Man, look, monkeys are some assholes, bro. Like, if they don't feel like being bothered, they literally throw shit at you. Oh, yeah, they'll let you and know. And then when they do feel like, yeah, when they do feel like being bothered, they be like, look, motherfucker, I can squeeze through that little crack that you got in your window. Right. Give me that sandwich. <laughs> monkeys is no joke, man. For real. Tear off the antenna on your car. Yep. yep. Take your antenna off. And 
Six Flags will look you dead in the face like that ain't our fault. <laughs> no, they tell you, they're like, look, 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 look. We told you when you came in here. Yeah. Any damage to your business is, is your fault. Well, what they do now is they have these uh, monkeys in the cage now. But they don't let them run. So, yeah, his connection got choppy for a second yeah, there. Yeah, you were breaking up. What did you say? He said they got the monkeys in the cages. I heard him. <laughs> oh, okay. Everybody go quiet. I can't hear nobody. Nah, your connection's just nah, trash. That, that was on your head, boss. Shut up, Steve. I'm freaking out. Shit. They really are. Uh, that, that All right, so, so where we at with this video game thing? Because I'm itching to get the wrestling. Yes, uh, I yeah, want no, to talk that. about wrestling. We are uh, okay. We, we have fresh start video this game month, so I definitely wanted to talk about the wrestling. This is where I'm quiet. Cool. Thank God. Shut up, Evie. <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel the love, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> <laughs> So, if I can start off, I would just like to point out that uh, I'm very caught up on this whole thing with Drake Maverick and WWE um, and NXT uh, with the whole Cruiserweight tournament and actually fucking winning, apparently. So, oh, wow. my whole thing is I love Drake Maverick, but for those of you who don't know who he is on Rockstar Spud from uh, TNA, um, I'm really confused on whether this was a work or this was a shoot from getting fired and then legit coming back because he obviously when he put out the video on uh, his Instagram after he found out he was getting released oh and he was God, like yeah. crying and shit that was a shoot he was legit crying he was upset yeah. um, and his popularity which he already was popular his popularity surged through the roof I'm wondering if this was a case of the yes movement all over again for him. That's how you know what I'm saying? It. Like life imitating art. Because it was great. You actually got to see him wrestle. Um, he's really good at wrestling as an underdog because he's so small. Like even compared to other cruiserweights, he's really, really small. Like he's just a small <laughs> built dude, yeah. and he can sell his ass off. But when he pulls off some spots and pulls off some good moves, they look really good. Um, so, I mean, I just thought it was a great a great look by WWE to actually listen to the fans and bring him back. Yeah. Um, but it also threw me for a loop because you had EC3, who was also released, who actually put out this like really cool, cryptic video about Rockstar Fuzz, saying, say his name, his name is Rockstar Spud, and saying basically like, yo, he was imminently returning to the uh, the Indies. So I thought they were going to like reunite as EC3 and Rockstar Spud and do stuff in another organization or, or on the Indies. But now I want to know like, what the hell's going on? Like, was it a work or was it? Well, what do y'all well, think? Well, the EC3 thing, he did something for uh, FTR as well. So I don't think I think he was legit. I think he was just legit doing that for like his friends. I think he even has a cameo now where you can pay him to do that type of stuff. So I don't think it was okay. just special. I don't. I like. I know he has a relationship with him, but I, I don't. I don't think there was like anything more to that than to him just making that video for his friends because he did it for some other okay. guys too. And. Uh, yeah, but no, I totally agree. I I do think that it was definitely when he was released that was real because there's it's it's very hard to imitate the emotion he had in that video. Like I'm not saying it's impossible, but it it's hard. And so yeah, right. and they honestly looked at that and went, "Bruh, he's about to say he has a lot more support than WWE." I'm I'm I say WWE, but it's probably Vince thought because. Honestly, like they, they, I think they realized their mistake on that. It was like, nah, we, we gotta keep him. There's, there's money to be had here. Cause I'm pretty sure we, most right. of us have seen that post talking about if you can't make money, uh, using Drake Maverick or Rockstar Spud, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally agree with that post too. By the way, that's why. But I thought it was so cool, bro. And the fact that I think he's a great performer, the fact that he was able to do all that and keep up the air that he could possibly be fired 
And it also made me feel like, does he even know what happens after that? Like, is he showing up at these tapings and they're saying, hey, listen, we're going to let you win tonight so you can advance. You know, we're going to keep you for another week or two. And he's like, oh, okay. Mm, and then the next time you show up, they say, hey, listen, we're, we're putting you in this triple threat because, you know, ratings are good. So we're going to keep you for another week or two. Mm-hmm. I legit think so, they didn't tell him until that triple threat match. I, that's when I think they told yeah. him. Because, like, you don't, like, you want to have, you want him to be able to keep up this air of, I don't know if I'm still going to win or not. But at the same time, mm-hmm. uh, you don't want him, I'm about to say, if you're planning on keeping him, you don't want him starting to field offers from other places that might be better than what you're going to give him. Right. Yeah, facts. Because, like, you know, because I know for a fact Impact was probably chomping at the bit to offer him something. <laughs> Try to get him back, yeah. Yeah. We all know AEW's out here poaching people. Okay, I will. I will. I'm probably as one of the only people that watches AEW in here. I won't say for sure. I don't think AEW would have taken them, especially since the, they've stated recently that outside of like very few people, like FTR, they were only signing athletic big men, which has kind of been true over the last couple signees. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Didn't they recently yeah, get so Luke like, Harper? They got Luke Harper, they got yeah. Brian Cage, uh, Lance Archer. Yeah, so, like, they're just, like, they're signing athletic. They're trying to bulk right up their now, heavyweight division. With the exception, of, uh, with the exception mm-hmm. of FTR, but that's mainly because of the, the years of buildup that FTR and the Young Bucks have had online. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they might be one of the best tag teams. Okay. Oh, definitely, like. I will go on record to say I believe AEW has the best tag division in, in wrestling right now. And I think we might have been having this conversation. I told you, like, I, I, I'm i not big on AEW. I didn't think it looked a dice, but I definitely agree that their tag team division is where it's at. Yeah, yeah we had this talk uh, the other day when we were doing trials. Yeah. Doing right. Trials. <laughs> but, yeah, their tag division is definitely where it's at. And with, with you know, I'm sorry. I got to keep calling it a revival for now, <laughs> but but the revival going there, I think that's just a whole nother, um, like facet of tag team wrestling they just added. Because up to that point, you got a lot of people who are like very spot heavy, a lot of flyers and you know stuff like that. And I like the fact that you know FTR brings that that air of like that old school rough and tumble, you know, yeah, lo- like, tag team yeah, wrestling. Uh, I know you're not big on AEW, but you should definitely check out the interview they did on last week's episode where they're like, look, we've come to, like, legitimize this division. Uh, and we're they legit say we're going to teach people how to actually wrestle. Like, I think they even call it the Lucha Bros because they're, like, they're the exact opposite of us, and we're going to teach them how to follow the rules like a tag match. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, they're very arrogant, but they can back it up, and I love it. Yeah, but that's a great part of their their, their gimmick, too, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Let me let me ask you a quick favor. Um, so WWE is more, not for right now, like more mainstream. So, um, oh, I will also um, say this. Uh, I feel like their women's division is slowly getting better because I know that's something else we talked about, how their women's division is super, it, it's probably garbage. one of the weakest women's divisions at the moment. Not like <laughs> talent-wise, but story-wise, but it is slowly getting better. I can't hear nobody. Right, Anthony. I don't know if I'm what? Okay. No, Anthony's gonna yeah, ask that. I'm a reserve. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I he's frozen for me, so I don't know what he's uh, gonna ask. Yeah, he's frozen on my screen too. Yep. Okay. And can you hear us? Uh, Anthony. He's moving and shaking. He's yeah, he's jumping. frozen. Yeah, he's frozen right now. It's the seagulls. The seagulls. It's that six flags. The seagulls it? like, look, bro. We want that food. So give me that fish. Well, so you you it, or you give us the fries. It's That's the funny. fries of your friend. Frozen, but he's, you can hear him clearly. Oh, oh, me? Yeah, I, I can't even hear him. Good. He's like super choppy. He'll, he'll like buzz in, buzz out for a second. Okay, now he's moving, but I can't oh, hear him. There he is. He's back. Say something, Ed. What's up? Nope, can't anybody hear, hear him? Silent. I can't hear him. Got the video back. To hey, Ed, if you can hear us, won't you um exit the call and come back in oh, wait, and see if your sound kicks back in?
Because that's what I had to do um, not too long ago. He had audio. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, he might have to. He might have to like leave the call and come back in again. Yeah, because on my screen he was moving, but then there was no audio. Yeah, he done froze back up on mine. Yeah, he's still mm-hmm. there. God damn, this is a rough one today, y'all. <laughs> well, you know what it is? It, the reception out there by Six Flags up is shitty. Oh, it's, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. What else coming in? I forgot Eugene was here. You know, mostly because he doesn't have a picture. And... Well, apparently he's got company. I don't know. What? <laughs> I met her. She's awesome. <laughs> Who got company? Me? No, Eugene. No, Anthony. Oh, Eugene. I mean, Eugene. Well, nobody talking about you. <laughs> I just came back in the call. I, apparently he got company. I was like, wait, what, what, what did I say? <laughs> I don't know if Anthony's gonna pop back in. <laughs> oh. My name is okay, TV. I am from Mexico. My TV oh, decided to give me a fucking promo of uh, that. Was... Oh shit! Oh TV. Oh, you said BB. Yeah, if you watch TV outside, uh, I'm here. What say? Well, I'm inside right now, Eugene. All right, so we lost Anthony. So, so let's continue, flashing. and hopefully he comes back, and he can still he can still talk about what he was talking about. Right. So I don't keep up with AEW or TNA very much. It's Everybody finished the cheese? Right. Like, was it Anthony? An episode of TNA on a whim, like an old episode the other night on YouTube. Just bullshitting. All right, let's, let's see what this shit used to look like. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Saw a young oh, ass AJ. Oh, there's Anthony. I think Ant's back. Yeah, yeah I can hear him. Ants, can you hear us? Or are you alive? Mr. Gone. Lewis. He's gone. Anyway, back to where you were saying. Going again. You said you watched I TNA recently. I watched yeah, I would just watch the old episode of TNA on your on YouTube. That still comes uh, on? Uh, well, TNA is now I, Impact? I think, yeah, TNA itself still exists, right? Yeah, it's now no, Impact. It, well, it's Impact is called now. Right. Just Impact. It is going. It had a rough cup. But it had a rough couple of years, but it's starting to. I hear it's starting to pick back up. I don't really keep up with that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just. Watched the full episode I'm checked out on a, a impact at this point. It's a shit show. So, uh, uh, I obviously I watched Raw and SmackDown this week. I yep. keep up with it. Has anybody watched Raw and SmackDown this week before we start talking about it? Yeah. Talk away. I didn't watch it because I'm to the point where I'm just I'm I'm all about uh NXT at this point. Oh, well, we, we, well, we got new tag champs, which, which completely blew my mind. Wait, which I was tag champs? Kind of disappointed well, with that outcome, man. I was like, well, uh, titles came, came Oh, out. Sasha and Bailey, right? On Friday, yep. Sasha and Bailey, which surprised me because I thought this would have been, at least in my opinion, this would have been the last moments. To really build on this whole Sasha and Bailey turning on each other, and Sasha and Sasha go for the title at Backlash. Yeah. Okay, well, so maybe not at Backlash, but I think the turn is still coming, and I think they're going to use those tag titles as a vehicle for it. So it's going to be a double turn where Sasha so and well, Bailey have the same face. Well, double turn implies that one of them's already face. I'm assuming it's a face turn from Sasha on Bailey. Uh, yeah, I, I like Bailey as a heel. I legit like she. She's awesome. Yeah, that's one of the good things I can say right now on the main roster is that they let Bailey turn heel, and she's doing a great job. And they would be damn fools to turn face anytime soon. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't see Bailey being a face anytime soon. Win or lose. Yeah. Like that temporary hill turn to try to get a Becky Lynch, it just didn't work. Oh, yeah, I didn't stick it. Nobody all. wanted to boo her. <laughs> nobody, now, hell yeah. We crazy. We love this chick way too much. She, she would have to come on live out. TV dropping F bombs going for that shit to stick. That, that probably would have. Neither. Fuck the man. If she came on TV <laughs> talking about fuck this and that, no one would care. 
<laughs> nah, she she yeah. probably had to pull a Hulk Hogan. <laughs> oh wow! What be racist? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would do it. That would, yeah, that would do it. Yeah, she'd be here for the rest of her life. <laughs> you don't have any, uh... But, uh, I was actually really disappointed. You don't have any, uh, I, don't know. I, I felt the like thing. they didn't need the title for that story at all. Well, no, me neither. That's why it threw me. I was super confused. Like, when I saw the pin Also, down, it felt I like they like... were building up, uh, Cross and Bliss versus the Iconics. Like, well, they were supposed not even felt like they were building that on Raw. Like, I'm not blind, right? Like... No, they were. That's exactly. That's where I thought that was headed. And they just... Well, Cross and Bliss? Uh, well, no, the Iconics. Oh. Yeah, they was going for the tag belts, and they just dropped that shot. Yeah, that was that was kind of weird because they they actually did the tag thing, and then they lost because um Peyton Royce went off, and then the other one smacked Peyton, and then they made up, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Because like they kind of made you think like, damn, they're gonna break up, but then it's like, nope, they hit you with the iconic swerve. And then that was it. Their whole thing with the tag team was kind of like over. They were gone again. Yeah, that confused the hell out of me. And I was like, that makes no sense. They went them home with injury or wellness violation. Something got to explain nah. it. I think it was injury. She must have just got injured again or something. They, but no, they were literally building. You don't have any of your wish names on on the Raw before that SmackDown. Just there are powers or nothing. Yeah. yeah now here's one. Here's what I want to ask, right? Now, with, with um, Bliss and Cross dropping the belts, does that mean are them two still going to remain face, or are they going to break them up as a team? Who the fuck I think they'll team? remain face, because what are they doing with Nikki Cross outside of that tag team situation? Before the tag team situation, I think it's looking her. like a triple threat match at Backlash for the titles. When is Backlash? In like two weeks? Next Sunday, I think. Well, oh, here's the WWE. Because if I'm not I mean, mistaken, was there a pay-per-view in May? <laughs> there I was. don't remember. What was it? Money oh, in the bank. Wasn't. Money in the right, bank. There was, yeah, there was, was. a five. Oh, there there were five. The they had five okay. weeks off. There was a five. Mm-hmm. There were five weeks off between oh. WrestleMania and Backlash, which I was thankful for because goddamn, there were too many pay per views between January and April. No, Money in the bank. Just happened. Thank you. That was it. It just seemed like it's been so long because usually Backlash is. Oh wait! Oh, they're doing shit way out of order. Yeah, we need to have a paper. When do they ever do what? shit in order? But yeah, no, you're you're right. It's, it was they're Money in the Bank happened, order, and, and that's then the fuck one because usually Money in the Bank doesn't happen until isn't that like two pay per views after WrestleMania? Yep. Normally, Backlash is usually after WrestleMania. It's usually the first. That's why I'm getting confused. It's got me fucked up because I'm thinking Backlash is the first, usually the first pay per view after Mania, but they get Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. Oh, and what was that question you were going to ask earlier? Oh, no, I was going to say, um, be, I was going to, we already started talking about wrestling. But I was going to say, I just wanted to hear, I heard a little bit of y'all talking about the cloud streaming. And um, I know we're putting on the show, so people are watching, but and you guys have mentioned my name. So I wanted to at least kind of say a little something about it. But um, we already kind of jumped into wrestling. Oh, okay. No, no, go ahead. What's this there? Yeah, I just feel like as a product in the show, you got people going to watch it, and they're going to hear people mentioning somebody and referencing, but that person never say anything, you know? So I feel like it's kind of like... No, no, go ahead. You can. Uh, yeah, say something. What's up? Go for it. No, I was just going to say, uh, I mean, I didn't hear all of what y'all said. I just caught the end, so I don't know everybody's perspective. I'll watch it later. Um, but... Um, no, my whole thing was like, uh, as a gamer, like I know I heard Franco saying, well, you know, Ant likes to play it all the time all over. And um, so originally when I heard of cloud gaming, again, everybody say Stadia, but it's every, everybody has a form of cloud, cloud gaming, uh, not just Stadia. But um, when, I first, when I first heard of it, I thought like, uh, I ri- originally thought because uh, when we went on vacation uh, in August, my wife was like, oh, um, don't bring your PlayStation. I'm like, yo, you know how much downtime it is on vacation when we was gone for eight days. So uh, when Cloud Streaming was coming out, I was like, yo, this would be cool because for me, I can just take a phone and a controller and not have to worry about taking my system. So that's just one thing, right? Or I could hook up to somebody's um, TV in a hotel room. So I thought, like, you know, gaming, like, if I'm on a trip for eight days and how we used to be so hardcore in Destiny, 
Um, it would be cool if I could still play on Destiny. I wouldn't have to miss, you know, when it's downtime. But uh, so that was cool to me. I think for me, cloud gaming is just a couple. It's some key things that to me as a gamer is cool. And that's why I bring it up. Not that you guys have to like it, but I feel like sometimes I just feel like as a gamer, I like the neck thing, right? So Frank will admit, like, the neck thing is kind of cool. It comes in handy. It's convenient. So even when there's certain stuff that's convenient as far as cloud gaming, no one wants to say it. And I feel that's just the stuff that bothers me because I feel like as a gamer, I can't be the only one that would think no downloads, no installs, no game copy. It would be kind of neat, you know? Um, as a gamer... Like last Wednesday, I was able to still, I had no power in my house, but I was able to still put on my, my stream uh, without power. So as a gamer, I feel like stuff like that is kind of cool. And I feel like sometimes, um, uh, to, be, to be blunt, I feel like sometimes you guys just intentionally, I don't know if you're trying to round me up or intentionally just like, oh, if anything like it, I don't like it. And so, um, you know, but... Uh, but yeah, I mean, I love technology. I love, obviously, you know I me, mean? you know, uh, folding phone and all that. I like when something new comes out. I bet I probably would have been the first person going crazy for the microwave when it was first thought of. And a lot of people was like, what? Man, I'd rather boil my food in the, uh, on the pot. But, um, yeah, that's my whole thing with cloud gaming. That's my, my, my point. Just wanted to throw that in. All right, when I get that, the technical I'm... side, too, I get, like, um, you know, Andrew and B said they did some, uh, some research, whatever. But what I will say is a lot of people um, has a lot of points of it, but no one but me actually owns it. So I feel like it's okay to, to do research, but no one actually used it, you know? So I feel like because um, there's a lot out there that make it look bad, um, but it's not as bad as what people think. And I feel like it's so easy to be like, um, yeah, I, uh, I read and I've seen that technically this is terrible, but uh, it's like I use it on a daily basis, weekly basis. I'm like, man, it's crazy because it's not what people say. But that's it. Uh, um, if I can, real quick, just to give you more of an idea of what we talked about. I actually kind of like filled it in because somebody said something about Stadia. And I said, hey, I wanted to address something that goes back to that. Because if we were talking specifically about Stadia and that thing, and what I pointed out was, that for me, it's not that I'm pro Stadia or against Stadia. Um, what the big thing for me was that I don't, it doesn't benefit my gaming lifestyle, was right. what I said about me. And then I said about True and Andrew, and there was the fact that, you know, they're these techie guys and they go by the tech. And that's why they kind of don't, they don't like it or they do like it. I can't say what they do or don't, but they go right. based off of their knowledge of the technology. Um, and then I can't remember what kind of B's thing was, B would have to say it. Our biggest thing was, I'm, I'm in support for any technology that comes out to do a game, and that's cool, but it's like, it gets to a point where, like, not everybody's going to like everything, and sure. then after a while, it's like, that's why I used to say, like, the beating the dead horse thing. I was like, you can love something, and that could be 100% your thing, but you can't make other people love it, too. And I use Destiny as an example for me because I could point out five, six, seven games I got sitting on my shelf that I literally have not touched. And these are, like, fucking great games. Like, because I'm so hardwired on Destiny right now, even though I can admit that Destiny is stale right now. <laughs> but I'm hardwired on it. So when I turn my system on, fucking I load Destiny up, and that's what I play. But I don't go to the next person and say, hey, B, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm playing Minecraft. I'm like, yo, why the fuck are you playing Minecraft? Come play Destiny, because Destiny is this and Destiny is that. Come play Destiny, come play Destiny, come play Destiny. You know what I mean? That's what I was talking about, because I guess oh, there's yeah. been this little the little uproar within our group about the whole stated thing. It's like, after a while, like, we get it. Somebody loves something, you got to let that shit go and just enjoy what you enjoy and yeah, let everybody yeah, else learn on their own in their own time, in their own place. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think you're talking about two different things. So, for instance, if you like shooter games... Well, no, I hold on, A Andy. So, what, yeah. that's what we were talking about before you came in. I think you caught pieces of it. We weren't talking about yeah. cloud streaming, per se. We were actually okay. talking about Stadia, specifically. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. it is cloud so I just, Yeah, I wanted to give you... Yeah, yeah, but I wanted to give you 
the, the behind that, what we were talking about and stuff. That's how your name came up in it because I, I use you as an example of you are a huge proponent of Stadia. You love Stadia. It fits your lifestyle. But like for me, your gaming lifestyle fits. For me, it doesn't fit my gaming lifestyle. So right. when the conversation about it comes up over and over and over again, I'm kind of just checked out on it because like it doesn't fit me. Like when I leave the house, I don't even think about gaming. I'm done. No, you know yeah, what I'm hey, saying? What, what, when, what, I'm, awesome. when I'm chilling with my family and we're doing like social stuff, I don't game at all. Like we could be in the house and we could just all sit down and say, hey, we're going to watch this movie. Or my girl could be like, hey, come, come lay down with me and watch this movie. My games are off. Like I don't turn my, I don't use my play games on my phone. I don't do anything because that's that's physical social interaction for me. That's my thing. Like I don't. When I'm when I'm with you guys on the games, this is this is where my interaction with the the stuff comes into play. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I just I feel like I just I kind of felt like um maybe you felt like. And I think you said it. You felt like that whenever you bring it up, we just go off because it's just you bringing it up. And I was just trying to give, at least from my point of view, some clarification of it. Because if you look, like, I fuck with you about Stadia when you start talking about it, but I don't play it. You know what I'm saying? Because after everything you told me about it, and then hearing what True and them say about it, and then what I've seen about it, stuff, I'm like, yeah, it's just, it's kind of not my thing. It's a niche thing that's just not for me. And that's and and I guess to go back to what you were just saying with it being cloud streaming, it's kind of the same thing for me. Cloud streaming just isn't my thing. Cloud gaming is not my thing right now because I only game when I'm home. You know what I mean? But I'm also that old war horse where like I don't like downloadable games. I want hard disk games too. So I'm on that side of the spectrum. Now, Franco, listen. Now, I hear everything you're saying. What I'm saying is, it's not. It's a lot of layers to it. So I get it. A lot of people actually don't care about playing away from home and stuff. So that's. I think that's a cool thing. But that's just my lifestyle. But when I when I bring up stuff like, like we, this happened to all of us. Especially I remember Destiny Part Two came out. Right. We all was on at midnight. Right. And some people was able to get on mm -hmm. before others. Some people was like, yo, and then, you know, oh, my install, like, why I got a the game copy? I don't even know what's the new thing now where it's always say, now it's copying the file. I'm like, when did they start copying files? It used to be you download, install, now it's copy, copy files, right? So what I'm saying is as a gamer, another thing with cloud gaming is there is no installs, downloads, game copies. You press purchase and play. So I feel like when I see stuff like that as a gamer, who is a game? Like, I get it. You said you're into hard copies, right? And that's fine, right? Like, Eugene fought it forever. Dude, he doesn't like downloads. I get it. That's that's. I get it, right? You want to hold sunny hands. But what gamer can honestly say, I don't care if there's a download or not. Like, it, I'm just saying that stuff like that is kind of cool. If you brought a game and press play and it started, like the new systems with the new SSD for the PlayStation, it's going to be cutting down. A lot of like, uh, like low time. A lot of stuff that we're used to. We're gonna be like, yo, this is so cool that it's so smooth and go fast. So when I say stuff like, imagine if you press play, or you press, you bought a game, you press purchase and play, right? So when the people be like, ah, I don't, that ain't nothing. It's like, as a gamer, I feel like, wow, either you just trying to be funny, or like, are you serious? Because I feel like it's features like that. Now I'm not saying you need to love it, get it. But when I say stuff like that, people literally look at me, and I guess I feel, because I say it, and be like, man, I don't care. I don't mind downloading. I get it. We all been living with downloading. But to honestly say it's not neat or cool to have no download at all, you know? So that's the type of stuff I'm talking about, you know? Yeah, and I, and I feel where you're coming from with that. Gamer. Yeah, I, I, I feel where you're coming from with that. And, like, and again, on my part, I don't have anything against data or whatever or, or, or for it. Like, I, it just doesn't fit me. But I'm also that dude that when I know I got to download a game, I pop that shit in as soon as I buy it and go off and do whatever the hell I'm doing. And I'll come back and start playing it eventually. I can legit say, like, it doesn't matter to me anymore. Like, if I got to wait for it to load or not load. But I, I see where you're coming from. But I think, again, this kind of circle it back around is it's not that people like it, don't like it, or they're against 
you or not against you or whatever, is that after a while, it's, to give you a good example, like Xbox, let's say Xbox came out. But Xbox One comes out, it's supposed to be the best shit on the market. And, you know, everybody's hyping it and they're talking about it. Like, yeah, this game is great. This game is great. Then it comes out, right? And then people decide to get it or don't get it, play it or don't play it, research it, do whatever, and then they make their own decision. And then you circle back and it's somebody who's still hammering you about this same thing months and months and months and months and months, and months years and years and years and years later. And you can't tell me you're not going to get aggravated and be like, nah, I don't want it. No, I hear you, but no, I don't want it. I'm going to use your words to make like, my point. Oh, no, listen, I'm going to use your words to make my point. I said, as a gamer, to not have to download, right? Now, you know what you said? Right. You didn't say... Man, that would be kind of cool. You said, I mean, when I download, when I get a game, I just know I'm going to download it and walk away and come back. If you said that to I me, didn't right? That. That's what you I said. I didn't say if that. Said that to me, no, that's right. not what I said. My exact words was, I know when I buy a game that, you know, it has download stuff. I said, but I'm one of those people where, like, I just open my shit, pop it in the system, right. and let That's not my thing. What I'm oh, who's gonna who care about a phone that opens up? I was like, it's cool because you have a smaller phone because phones are getting so big, and then when. It's not like you guys getting it is going to make me get it, right? Or I'm always going to get it. What I'm saying is is I think people intentionally don't acknowledge something that um, that could be new that has a, a feature that would be, um, would be, would be uh, beneficial. I'll use that word then, right, instead of the word cool, right? So there's right. been a bunch of times where, like, uh, the Call of Duty Warzone, Yo, the, the install is 80 gigs, so I had got, I game it, put the disc in, right? But then I, um, I, um, no, I downloaded the game, and then I game it and put the disc in. So I thought it was just going to cover over. So we went to stream the game, and I couldn't play. I was like, yo! So they was like, yeah, man, you got to actually delete the download and then reinstall it from the one from the disc. So I was annoyed, so we literally couldn't play that game that day because I didn't know. So because the download was taking so long, right? What I'm just saying is beneficial if I didn't have to download at all and I just press play, that would have been beneficial. When I mention stuff like that to you guys, nowhere you'd be like, oh, you know, that wouldn't be beneficial. It's like, well, I mean, when I get a game, I put the disc in and I know that it's going to take a while. That's what I'm saying, you know? It's no acknowledgement and either it's because I said I feel like it's more because I said it, you know? I feel like if Justin said it... No, and no, the issue is the fact that you continually say it over and over again. We got it the first time, dude. This nope. is the thing, because it's really not about who said it, because okay. Anthony, we all love you, but you're not that special. It's not <laughs> that you said what it. It doesn't bother us that you said it. It's just that certain things move the needle for certain people. We've had this conversation when we were talking earlier. I said, Stadia doesn't move the needle for me, right? And uh, like, and don't get, don't get me wrong. I do agree. It would be great to come home with my PS4 game, whether it be hard copy or whatever, turn my system on, plug it in, or, like, put it in my system and just play it or go to the PlayStation Store and say, you just bought uh, Devil May Cry 5. And then instead of waiting for it to download for 45 minutes to an hour, just play it. Not saying it's a bad thing, but as far as, like, Stadia on a whole, not even just that one feature, Stadia on a whole doesn't move the needle for me. I get that. Yeah, I get that. I, I get that. I get that. Because if you look at it as a whole, I get it. Like, a lot of people, um, yeah, as a whole, I, I totally get that. I, I, I hear what you're saying. And I think that's what we're all trying to say in a nutshell. Right. I'm just saying yeah. you got to admit, though. So here's the thing, because I'm putting you on the spot. You have to admit, <laughs> often when I say something, right, and I'm not, I don't say, like, oh, you need to run out and get this. When I say, like, a feature or something, 
like again, it was what Franco did. Instead of him, so what Justin did, I appreciate that. He said, I don't lie. Would I want to be able to press play instead of waiting 45 minutes to an hour? Of course, but as a whole, I don't like it. Franco, on the other hand, was like, well, you know, I already know I'm going to disc in, so that's the stuff I'm talking about. So those are two different scenarios. As a gamer, I feel like I would have, as a gamer, I would have seen what Justin said. Yeah, it ain't for me, but hey, that's All right, cool. so let me, let me just cut 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 the let I'll just give you the straight shit, right? right? You want you what you want is for me to say, hey, you know what, as a gamer, it would be cool to just load a game and and just play. I mean just plug a game and just play and not have to load it. I'll acknowledge that. As a gamer, it would be cool to just pop a game and just play. But this is the point of what I said that you're missing. Oh my God, Frank! And I, I put it to you in a way you. that you that I don't know not I makes sense, but straight to you. I don't have anything against the stater, and it's not that you bring up stater that makes me not get into it. It's the fact that you sit and you act like a cheerleader for stater when you clearly know we're tired of talking about stadia. Like my thing okay. is, if you came into the chat one day, right? And you said, hey, check this new shit out about Stadia. Now you can do A, B, and C, and D that you couldn't do before. I would listen to that. And they'd be like, oh, okay. And then go on by my business. But then if you come back the next day and you say the same thing to me again, and then you come back the next day and you say the same thing to me again, that shit's not new anymore. I don't want to hear it anymore. That's the point that I was trying to get across to you. I don't have anything against Stadia. I'm not a, a fan of Stadia or dislike Stadia. My thing is, I don't need somebody constantly cheerleading something that there's nothing new to hear about. Because when you first started talking about Stadia, Anthony, if you go back, I was interested. I was interested. You and I had a conversation where I actually said, I don't know. Maybe I might kind of get into it. And then after a while, I kind of wasn't. I realized it really wasn't for me. Then you came back and told me, hey, guess what, y'all? State is now free for everybody to try. Da, da, da. And again, I said, yeah, that's cool, but it still really doesn't fit my thing, so I'm not into it. Right. So the point I was trying to say is you can love something. We can all love something specifically, but you can't make other people love it the way you do based off what you think yeah. we should all say according to what you think. We're all and gamers, think, but we're all different types of games. Yeah. And for I, I me, having to load a, sit 45 minutes to load a game versus instantly load a game doesn't make or break me because my attention span when it comes to starting up a game is super short. Like, I'll pop a game in to load it and then go do other shit for, like, five hours and forget that I was loading the game. Doesn't make or break me. You know what I'm saying? So it's not that we're against it just because you said it. it's the amount you said you know what i'm saying right. and i look true in them they give all these technical things and i get tired of hearing them talk about it i'm like all right i'm tired of hearing that it's shitty i'm tired of hearing that you know it's it's dependent on on wi-fi and if the wi-fi don't fucking work well fuck it now you can't play stadium i don't give a shit at this point because it's not for me, the fact that it does everything you like and it does for you, I think that shit is awesome because I even pointed out when we talked about it, I said it's like perfect for Anthony's lifestyle. He can game wherever he goes. He can game at the dinner table. He can go out and game when he's out. He can game in a fucking movie theater if he wants to. But for me, that's not my thing. So it's not that it's not that we're down in it because you talk about it. It's that, what's there to talk about it anymore at this point? That's new. Well, me, not the, what is new sorry. about Stadia right now that if it came out of the conversation, I won't know about it. That's the point. And it's the same thing with fucking Destiny, which we just went off on that, how much of a piece of shit Destiny just was for us before you came in. It's the same thing with whatever the next thing comes out. Once PS5 comes out, I dare a motherfucker to come in the chat seven months after the PS5 come out and try to sell me on a fucking PS5 
when the shit been out for seven months and nothing new was about it. Like, I'm gonna tear their ass up too. Franco, I'm sorry. I'm like, Yo, like, why are we still talking about this? Like, it's nothing new. But Franco, That's I'm sorry. You. No, no mean. But it's to answer great. your question, did you hear so that it's the like, CEO of Google? New, it's awesome, right? Let it breathe, and then let it walk. Is what I'm saying. Don't beat the dead horse. Yeah, I think we I just want to kind of explains my stance on it. Where oh, I'm, no, you I'm, definitely oh, are. I was oh, okay, okay. no, I, I get it. Know. But, but Franco, to answer your question, you did you hear? That the CEO of Google Stadia division has said Hello? that Google that Stadia is a disappointment. Hey, anybody? What's up, Franco? What the fuck just happened? Hey, BB, you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Justin, can I you hear me? Wait a minute. I can hear you clearly. Yeah, we've heard oh, you this whole time. So y'all heard everything I said, right? Yes. 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 All right, I'm gonna leave the call and come back because I think somebody was calling my phone, so now I can't hear y'all. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> that probably explains why he wouldn't stop talking when people were talking. Roman, yeah, that, that call your mom. I was about to say, I have to okay. Okay. he just said he can't hear oh, you. Sir. I know. <laughs> All right, well, let's get back on the wrestling. Right. Okay, I'm back. I can hear y'all. Yay. That was a long cool. left turn. Let's get back on wrestling. <laughs> Yep. Uh, I'm very ready for uh, the takeover tonight. Takeover Amen. tonight? Yeah, takeover in your house yeah. tonight. What time? Uh, yeah. I might, you know, uh, I might watch that. Man, I'm not sure. Eight o'clock. Seven, or, seven to eight, eight, eight probably. probably. Like, I've been so thrown off by the order of the pay per views that I swear to God, backlash is every Sunday for like the last three Sundays. <laughs> Here, here's I think, a question. I think here's backlash question. is next week. Don't it quote me on week. that. Pal. I believe it is next week. So here's a question for a person who ain't watched wrestling in like a goddamn <laughs> a decade. <laughs> if a person wanted to get into wrestling, where would you tell them to start? Honestly, in the NXT. best place to jump in is after a pay per view. Actually, I got an even yeah. better answer for you. Um, yeah, WWE Network is free. Now, now what comes in a free subscription? Every pretty much everything but the pay per view. Oh, so the pay per view is still nine dollars. You yeah. gotta pay separate. So you can literally download uh WWE Network app and just pick and choose and watch shit and at least because that will at least give you a baseline. You would know who's who and what's what and now yeah, of course that's since cool. I, since I got if you're paid for consistency right? though I would stick with NXT if you're going with WWE and there's other wrestling outside of that though. So I can now go into WWE app right and just um choose the account I want now. I will probably. I mean I'm sure you could go in and if there's an option to cancel, you're you're paid and you could probably you would probably cancel your paid and then you would probably just log in as free. Look, man, I just use Hulu for all that shit. I ain't paying money for that. I mean, I'm already paying my... I mean, I'm not arguing with $10 a month for a pay-per-view, so... Well, that's good. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. I mean, Justin, I, I mean, you know what the crazy part is? Free, that's so, what you, get the free, you get the free version, and you get to watch, like, all the old stuff and the different stuff going on. Cool little things like that. Or you can pay $10 a month and also have access to all the pay which costs anywhere from 50 to 60 bucks. Yeah, and you're getting I, one, two, and three of them every month. Yeah, I think I'm going to pay my nine dollars a month. It's a big deal. It's, it's, it's one of those things. Like, but as far as jumping back in, um, I agree with whoever. I couldn't hear who said it, but if it's right after a pay per view, especially if it's one of the major pay per views on whichever brand you decide to watch, like whether it be AEW, WWE. New Did I lose everybody again? Yeah, this is starting to piss me off.
is that? That, no, the last time I watched was when he, um, fucking, what was his move called? When he did his boots, his booty slap and basically put his ass in the nigga's face. The stink face. The stink face. Yeah. Yes. The last match I watched, I believe he did it to Mick Foley. Not Mick Foley, um... What is I that nigga's Bobcat Jeff or Mankind? Um, <laughs> no, no, not Mick Foley. I'm trying to remember. He, the it, it, was, it was the old white dude that ran with Triple H before he became a CEO. Okay. Oh, Ric Flair? Yes. Kane or Ric Flair? Ric Flair? I think, I think Ric Flair. Well, I don't think Ric Flair ever became <laughs> CEO. <laughs> what? No, he was talking about. No, he said before H. Triple H became CEO. He was CEO. saying Rikishi did it to him oh, back okay. when they were in Evolution. And and in Ric Flair's defense, there was a storyline where he he was actually co-owner of WWE. Oh, you know what? You're right. Remember? <laughs> that shit was funny. Yeah. Very short, yeah. but was funny. And then after after Rikishi retired, I watched it until Eddie Guerrero's passing. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you've been going for a long time, brother. Yeah, man. <laughs> you missed. He probably about to say if that's a game, he's probably like Angel Garza on Raw. Very reminiscent of Eddie. Yeah. 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 That's really. Funny. Yeah. Somewhat. <laughs> I'm not a big Angel Garza fan though. I like. I'm like. Eh. I'm like. I'm like wishy watch ready. You know, and I, everybody's gonna laugh, but I, I actually like Austin Theory. I oh, know I like him too. No, I like yeah, no, I, I like, like Austin Theory more than I like um Angel Garza. I, I like think they can do a lot with Austin Theory. Theory. They made him part of um, the Monday Night Messiah's yeah. click. Yo, that's yeah. that's how to Oh no, you done messed up. You just talk about Seth Rollins while Anthony's around. <laughs> yes, right, boy. Seth freaking for the weekend. Speaking of which, no can you answer a question? Anthony, Whatever happened to no, the Anthony, people? there is no Seth freaking for the weekend. He is the Monday Night Messiah and they okay. respect that. Okay. Well, there are two things wait, wait, that wait, I don't wait, know wait. that I need answers to. What happened to the Hardy Boys, and how did they end the storyline they were doing with Lita and Kane? Oh my Lord Jesus! <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> are you I, fucking serious? Look, let me put it to you like this: that happened before my time. I let someone else handle that. The Hardy Boys are doing Jesus Christ! Right now. Wow. Well, Jeff, yes, if I say, you want to see Christ. Jeff, you can watch SmackDown. Jeff's an alcoholic. So apparently, apparently, so, Gene Snitsky. Knocked Lita off the apron and made her lose her baby that she didn't actually, she wasn't actually pregnant with with Kane. So then Kane started feuding with Snitsky, and then Lita became a dirty whore because she started fucking Edge, and right in the middle that's of the how that whole that whole thing disappeared, dissipated in the smoke. With, okay, with, with real weird. life, where real I life meets shit. the storyline, bro. I I meet I meet shit. I miss shit. That, that's cool. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you missed a lot of good wrestling, though, bro. Yeah, yeah. For real. Like I said, if you want to see Jeff, he's on SmackDown. If you want to see Matt, he's in AEW. So. AEW. Which is crazy as shit. Yeah. No, what's Sorry. crazy as shit was when they did that recent storyline where they had Jeff arrested for being under the influence and all that shit, and Matt actually tweeted about it, letting them know he was pissed off about that storyline. I believe it. Oh, wow. a lot. Yeah, a lot of people are just uh, are unhappy with that storyline. <laughs> that, I think that's why. Yeah, but did you see what Matt's tweet was? No, I did not see Matt. He did. He did a subliminal tweet. He literally said, "For the record, I am very happy working for Tony Khan." <laughs> oh shit! I mean, to be fair, he's been doing some great shit, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, no, I think that was a I think that was a shot at Vince for pulling that bullshit with old Matt. I mean, with Jeff. To be fair, they always use Jeff Pass. I feel like that's always like they, a story. They do. Well, they, 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 they do. They, they go to that over and over again. There's a pr- it becomes a point where when art imitates life crosses the line. Yeah. Because I was even yeah. you know, I was even gonna say when uh when Franklin was talking about 
Lita V K was sleeping around. I was about to say that was a storyline. I was like, well, technically it was because they had Edge fight uh, Matt Hardy. So yeah, that was still, yeah. Look, yeah. look, look, look. When I say art imitates life, that shit was real. So they fired Matt because he was unprofessional, and then brought him back so they could use it as a storyline. Yeah, that was crazy. That's that crazy. shit was ill. I think as long as Jeff's okay with it, then it's all right. I'm pretty yeah, sure at Jeff. The of, at, okay. at the end of the day, as long as Jeff is okay with it, that's the most important right. part. Yeah, because it's his, it's his life that they're using yeah. to create their right. show. So, yeah. Yeah, because, like, right. if he says no to that, I mean, they can right. technically still do it. They just can't do it with him, which wouldn't right. make any sense. Which would defeat the purpose of the storyline, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like. Back for that shit. Right. Yo, you know what's funny? Do you guys. Storyline. It was CM Punk, right? No. Uh, no, hold on. Well, he had CM Punk had the drunk storyline with Jeff Hardy. It was, wasn't it between Chris Jericho and CM Punk? I think they were trying to Where? get him drunk, but I don't think they succeeded. I well, kind of no, remember CM that. Punk, I, I remember that storyline. Jericho was trying to say how CM Punk wasn't as straight as he tried to pretend to be. Oh, you know, yeah, shit about like that. Okay, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they actually went any. I, like, I don't remember that really going anywhere. Yeah, that, that, that like, storyline died that shit was quick. Blood. That shit was garbage, yo. And then hey, there was a CM storyline with Jeff being, being on drugs and drinking. With CM Punk and Jeff were beefing. Yeah. So, hey, guys, so, I know. Know. What's up? Do you know all this time I've been sitting in my daughter's trunk? Oh, she got a hatchback. So I've been laying in the hatchback and she's been driving for great adventures this whole time as I'm still on a podcast. <laughs> That's some old uh, kitty shit right there. Aunt, I love it. <laughs> and I just laid out, you know, saying, listen, I'm going to show grown to be doing shit like that, Anthony. But I'm still small enough. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What a good fucking answer, but I'm still smiling though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah. So oh, that what? Uh, the question though, true. <laughs> yeah, true. What happened? I said I hope that answers the question though. <laughs> yeah, I ain't missing nothing. That, that that's good. That's all I wanted to know. So um do we have any is it too early for predictions for backlash or I mean, right, let's do them. Let's do them. Uh, I can pull up the card right the now Rock if you want. I win. mean, there's more stuff coming <laughs> up. They, I mean, there's probably more matches. Wait, what? Now, so we can give them for next. <laughs> you have some matches. We, we want to say that for next Sunday. Yeah, we should probably. Wait, no, no, wait. Sunday. What if somebody if just said anything? Who's gonna win? Fucking John. Take- oh, oh, Who's gonna, gonna win? <laughs> but, yeah, if we do predictions, it should be for uh, take uh, takeover tonight because that's the that card's finalized. But All right, so like pull up the card. Let's, let's do it. The show to guess. Yeah, I listen to Franco and Julian talk about that. I don't watch. A, I don't watch um, NXT. Although I might watch that tonight. All right, I'll still pull up the card. Let's, let's do, do it. it. I got you. Pulling it up right now. Yeah, I'm so far behind on NXT. I uh, legit like. I just. I told Franco okay. the reason I watch AEW more than I watch NXT live is because I just like to watch. I like to binge watch NXT, and I just literally just finished doing that now, right before this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably like two. Uh, yeah, you know what's funny? And I put you on to some funny shit. I um, I was like a secondary NXT fan at first. Anthony actually put me on the NXT because me and him were having this random conversation, and he was telling me like, "Yeah, NXT is so good." And I'm like, "Bro, NXT is like some fucking contest. It's all right." He's like, "No, no, no. You really gotta watch it. That it relaunched." And I was like, "Yeah, I know it relaunched, but blah blah blah." And Anthony was like, no, you really got to watch it. And then the next time me and him had talked about it, I think I had watched, I had binge watched, like, like fucking 15 episodes or something like that. Wow. And yeah. it reinvigorated me into wrestling. Like, I can honestly say that because it's the reason why I watch NXT. And I'm the same way. I like to binge watch NXT too, but I also like to stay up on it because NXT is more go than show. For me, so they get in the ring and they do their thing, right? And like it's really good, like really fast-paced action. I like how they literally try to build up each person. Mm-hmm. Like you'll see some people every week, and then you won't see them for like a month. That's 
because they're focusing on another group of people, which I think is awesome. Um, The thing with AEW, which I'm not saying anything against AEW, because I think they actually, it's it's a good show. It just didn't live up to the hype for me Mm. because they focus too much. It's weird. Like, you got the elite here, right? And you built Mm -hmm. this brand around the elite. And you focus so hard on not focusing on the elite, which yeah. I think is it was, stupid. It was, to I, me, I right? That was the issue was, was about say, the reason they did is because they because they basically helped run the company. They didn't want people to say, "Oh, you're just booking yourselves into positions of power." Like they're doing that's like, they're stupid. Now one of the main focuses, but they didn't want that criticism, which is why they. Yeah. Uh, cool. But for me, they were done. Right. So. Go ahead. Okay. No, I was gonna say my real quick. My thing was it was supposed to be the anti WWE like show. Not all, but a lot of like you had the first champion, a WWE guy. I feel like I know that anti WWE, but it's like so much WWE. You know? And well, here's the that funny part. Criticism. Also, I will say to Franco's point, I feel like you were listening to many, to too many people that were wait, talking about how it was like they're gonna kill WWE. I'm very glad I was, like, really paying attention to the build of it because I had my expectations set from the get-go. I knew exactly what this was going to be, and uh-huh. I, I managed going in for because I knew it was going to be, this is just another place to watch wrestling. This is what it is. Well, what here's my thing. You're, you're absolutely wrong. I wasn't listening to the hype of other people building up how they're going to go after WWE. Because if y'all remember, I kept saying, like, it ain't AEW versus WWE. It's the fans trying to say it's AEW versus WWE. Yeah. It's Y'all remember when I was uh, coming no back war. from Atlanta? It's all between the fans. Yeah, when I was coming from Atlanta, I actually ran into some guys that worked for AEW. And okay. they were just kind of giving me the rundown, like what they could, like, yeah, we're going to start doing live shows. We're going to be on the East Coast around this time. And we're going to do this for that. It's going to be some great stuff. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I was just watching who was going in, right? So my whole thing with AEW is, again, it's all, all elite wrestling, right? We know that's the play on the name of the elite. I don't give a shit what the fans are saying about, oh, y'all just booking yourselves, da, da, da. Dude, y'all jump on the AEW bandwagon because of the fucking elite. So in my mind, I think it's absurd that we didn't see somebody like Kenny Omega or Cody or even Hangman Adam Page being the fucking first champ. Hangman Adam Page yep. should have went over Jericho. Right? I do because agree with Jericho you that the... would have legitimized Kingman Adam Page by getting him that win. And then he could have feuded with him and won the title. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that, to me, that made That's sense as a fan. I, I 100% agree with you on that. The only That's reason they played Jericho the champion and uh, the first champion and had him a champion as long as they did was to get eyes on their product. That is the only reason. Again, yeah, go ahead. Again, but again, that automatically goes back to what I don't like, is the fact that you're supposed to be doing it different. You want to give us a different look at wrestling. You want to give us another outlet. You want to do it different. Use who you have. Let me see a hangman at a piece. You had the idea. You had it. All you did was put a WWE guy as your first chance. And I agree, he did bring some looks to it. He's a legit wrestler who can legit, you know, be a champion. I do like the pain maker persona, but at the same time, a fan like me, I wasn't familiar with all of the elite people that are around, but I was familiar with certain ones. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, the ones that I really, really like aren't in AEW, like, you know, like the realism of this, stuff like that. Um... You, the people that you built it around, yeah, you can bring these other guys in to legitimize the program and different stuff like that, but why work so hard not look like you're doing something? We know they're fucking vice presidents of shit. We knew that going into it. So no shit that they're booking. No shit. I didn't want to see Jericho as the first champion. And that's just me. And that's where I felt like they first dropped the ball for me. And I continued well, to watch it. And you introduced some decent dudes to me. Like, I, I, I bring his name up every chance I get. 
I think Luchasaurus is the best thing since fucking sliced bread. I don't give a fuck with nobody. If they put the heavyweight championship on him, I'm watching it. That's it. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's funny you say that, Franco. <laughs> Saxy, I agree with you because I, I watched the first couple episodes of AEW, you know, and I was like, all right. And, and when Jericho became champ, I was like, really? And then... Because, like you said, they're not trying to be WWE, but yet. And then when I heard Jr. on commentary, I still don't agree with that. I was like, "Oh shit!" With that, like, nothing against Jr. I love Jr. But I love you know. Jr. too. And at first, I was excited, but then it was like, "Is that enough? Like, is that enough to draw me in? Do I really just? Am I really just?" That? And I'm like, "No." Like, oh, Honestly, man. Jr. is one of the worst parts of AEW almost every week. Cause he, yeah, he uh, Justin, you were super hyped when he first came. Yeah, right. I remember saying that to y'all. Like, oh my god, I'm like, yeah, what? Justin, like, yo, I'm, I'm in. And is, then um, I watched literally that one episode and then didn't watch it again. Mm-hmm. Is, is, you know, you know what the know, part is? JR's on there. I was like, Jr. Hey. doesn't fit AEW. He doesn't. Jr. does He's not great, fit he, AEW. That's it. He's a great sit-down interviewer, but he doesn't fit their play-by-play commentary style. He, it just doesn't yeah. work for him. Like like I said, I love JR, but honestly, if they're going to keep him, I honestly think they should replace him on the booth, either take him off or have someone else in, and just have him do backstage interviews, because that's what he does the best right now. Yeah. And that's not taking away anything from his career. Like, he's probably greatest one of the greatest commentators of all time. Like, no doubt. Just I would say JR is the greatest wrestling commentator. Oh, yeah. No, Hands down at this point. But I don't think he's meant for anything. Yeah. Like I said, I If you're like going to start something new, give me somebody. Give me some fresh shit. And, like, you've got great commentators out here. But uh, who's the current lineup on the commentary team? Excalibur, Tony Schiavone, and uh, Jim Ross. What about Chad? Did Chad start commentating too, though? Yeah, he about to say he's he kind of shows up when he's needed, but right now he's managing Brian Cage, so I don't expect him to see him on the oh, okay. too much. Question: Is Jr. still uh, oh, saying the incorrect names of some wrestlers? Yes, okay. that's yes, <laughs> it's so bad. Please, please tell me this: Call Brody Lee, Luke Harper. He has not done that. Uh, he has it called Jake Hager, Hager Jack Swagger, or sorry, he called him Swagger at one point, not Jack Swagger, but called him Swagger. Not bad. Yeah, but I yeah, I caught that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, we're, we're about to say, see, like, if it was one time, it wouldn't be a problem, but he's done it with multiple people a couple different times, so it's like, gotcha. it's not it's not a huge issue, but it's one of those where you're kind of like, should he really be doing commentary right now? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's different if he's playing, if he's playing the words to kind of, like, throw their old names in there, but playing with the words, the fact that he's legit kind of calling them their other names by accident. Oh shit! For real? Like, I, it, yeah, it would be all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like he didn't call. Oh, like, is it one thing if he was like, yeah, look at the swagger on Jake Hager, or that takes a lot of swagger. For what right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. he tried it's to cover with that, but when he first said it, he was like, uh, something. He something literally he said he calls him swagger. Yeah. Oh, like, wow. did, he, did he make a mistake? Like, like, was it a mistake? Yeah, I think oh, it's a mistake. Like, like he's looking at these guys, and he's calling them by the names that he knows. Right. Yeah, so like they had to, like they had to correct him. It was like I think he meant to say Hager. He was like, yeah, you can excuse me because he has a lot of swagger. Like he tried to save it, yep. but everyone who yep. knows that's the like, time uh, I'm talking about too. <laughs> that's exactly yeah, okay. it. Yeah, like they tried to save it, but uh, it didn't Damn work. Jr. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that just goes back to what I said. Like he's not. He doesn't fit. He doesn't fit the AEW. Yeah, right. Totally and that's that. nothing. Yeah. That's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, that's stick him, to keep him with sit, keep him with some sit down interviews because he does those really well. Just take him off the commentary. Right. <laughs> yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Maybe they should get like a younger crew in there. Yeah. I mean, it ain't that. necessarily about getting a younger crew. I mean, the younger crew is great, but I just want somebody who's more in touch. Like, I'll be honest with y'all. If they were going to grab any commentator from WWE and throw them in there, Mauro Ronaldo. Dude, Mauro Ronaldo is probably the best yeah. commentator right now. Currently. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, who? He, he would fit perfect, but here's my reasons why. He's in touch. What's up? He's in touch with everything that's occurring. 
he knows all the right. moves by name. He knows all the. He is also. <laughs> he, a, he knows all the moves by name. He knows you from hear his, in his voice when some crazy shit happens is so genuine. Oh no, that yeah. dude is like awesome. Mama Mia. I'll say like he people is. don't start chanting Mama Mia at a crazy spot just because it's cool. Like it's that rea- his reaction to that is just like it's genuine. Like that's him. Like he's Mama like that's what he Mia. said. No, put, I it, will legit, put it this way. I will Mauro legit. Ronaldo's Mama Mia. Here's the thing. His his Mama Mia is. JR's is going to be a slobber knocker. From yeah. The like, yep. so you know in my saying? house, we watch Raw, we watch SmackDown. And I'll be honest with you, the only reason why I don't watch NXT is because I already imposed enough wrestling on my girl. She ain't trying to hear that shit. Three days of wrestling. <laughs> she's, she's done by Raw and SmackDown. I'm just saying, you could right. cut two of them off and switch over to Wednesdays. You'd probably enjoy it a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm really, like, when it comes to NXT. I'm really big on Velveteen Dream right now. That, oh, right. I got the card up whenever we're ready, by the way. Well, let me, before, you go on, before you go on the card, let me ask you all this. So a lot of people um, wanted there to be crowds back. So I, I, obviously I was the one guy that was like, I feel like it's more dialed in without the crowd. So what do you guys think now that they have somewhat of a crowd? What's your what's – your... Well, my issue with WWE's crowds is they don't sound as genuine, no, if that makes sense. Monkeys. Yeah, like, yeah. apparently, this is just a rumor, I'm saying, apparently this, this is a rumor, not 100% sure if this is true, but apparently during commercial breaks, they will, like, come on the megaphone and tell them, hey, you guys need to be a little, little bit louder during this next part, because you guys sound a little quiet, just said, like, they keep... They, well, this is what I gotta out. understand about the crowd reading. These are pre-taped shows. They're shows, like, shows. So, when they do the break, they're going to go out there and tell these people, hey... We need y'all to be a little more energy for this and that. A little more this and that. A little more this and that. Um, at the end of the day, I think what came out of them not having crowds was camera. And don't zoom in and down it up that way. But as a wrestling fan, come on. You can't tell me that a live crowd does not play a factor. Oh, it yeah, no, shows they... the momentum of a lot of no. there's some matches that I watch that I just check out of the matches like in the middle of the match. Yeah. So yeah. when do you yeah. think yeah. live crowd will be a thing? Yeah. It's gonna be a couple more months before they go to full live. Yeah, crowd. probably a while. And even then even then it's gonna be limited to the amount of people that yeah. can yeah. Be there. Pretty much first come, first so Man, the day we get a full crowd back in a wrestling show, it is going to be hot. It'll probably be in 2021 or early 20. And yeah. first show, the fucking roof is going to explode off the roof. Oh, fuck yeah. It's going to oh, be yeah. nice. Before the show even starts, that initial chant is going to blow the roof right off the roof. Yep. It really yeah. is, bro. It's probably going to take like 10 minutes before the show starts. They're just going to be chanting yep. and chanting and chanting. Chanting, yep. chanting. Yep. Yeah. I can imagine it now. I can imagine it now because people have been waiting. I can feel like people have wanted to cheer for Drew McIntyre since he's won that title. He's gonna have to just sit in that ring and bring it in for a bit, bro. Yeah. When he, when they first get yep. crowds back. Oh. I'll be honest <laughs> though. I would have much rather see the Scottish Cycle that title. What was that? Like I love Drew McIntyre and and as a wrestler right now, but I love this Scottish Cycle. When he would say how everybody was weak and he was there to expose them. Hold up, you, Franco. You mean when he was yeah. playing second second fiddle to my boy, the greatest King Corbin? No, no. When he wasn't playing second fiddle to your boy. <laughs> if <laughs> Yo, you remember the Scottish, the, the Scottish psychopath, the Scottish psychopath kind of came along after that. Didn't that nickname originate with Drew, not Drew, uh, Dolph Ziggler? Wasn't he like the first person to call him that? Probably. Actually, I think he did when he first when he first came up to the main roster when he was like backing up on Drew. Yeah. Yep. But then when he, that character was fleshed out right after his own Bobby Lashley and um, King Corbin. Ant boy Baron Corbin. Wait, <laughs> hey, hey, as a little King, King Corbin, all right? Yeah, Respect. Was calling, was he him wasn't a king back then. Hey, listen. I'm a Baron Corbin fan. All I'm right. Worried. Fuck this King Corbin shit. I'm a Baron Corbin fan. I'm a I'm a not the, fan. Not the not the uh, like what was he called? Man. Not the constable. <laughs> not fucking King. I'm the lone wolf 
Baron Corbin fan. I'm a firm believer that Baron was supposed to be an NXT champion. Yeah. And he was in the middle of a big NXT title feud where they did the triple threat match, and boom, they pulled him right up to the main roster. I think he was gonna get the belt if he didn't um trash talk that um the uh that sergeant in the military on Twitter. Cause remember he was uh he yeah, won the, uh, I remember that. Yeah, he won well, he yeah, won the money in the that. bank. Everything was looking good. He was like real hot and then he got into that argument on Twitter and um they made him lose to John Cena. Which makes sense because you know John Cena's a big supporter of the troops and all that shit. Yep, and John Cena usually lets you beat him to get pushed. But nope. Right. So, but anyway, but go ahead, Julian. You want to, uh, I'm oh, sorry to be wrong. the first that. match on the card. No, that's fine. All right. So, first, uh, I'm not sure if this is an order or not, but this this probably will be the first match based on how it is. You got me no, and just whatever you got. Yeah, me and Yim, Tegan Knox, and Satori Blackheart. I think I said that right. Yep. Versus Candice no, LeRae. No, Shazi Blackheart. Kai. Yep, her. Versus Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez. I'm going to go with the Hills on this one, and I'm going to go with Dakota Kai. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. Definitely. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Um, what's her name turned bad? Uh, Candy Ray? Ray? Yeah, her Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah you missed her now. and Johnny. Oh, well, no, I seen yeah, Johnny her... thing. So, remember that match where no, it was supposed to be Tamaki Alpha cool. versus Johnny for the last time? Okay. She turns heel there by helping Johnny win. Kicks her. Oh, out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she, yeah, like, she makes it look like she turned on Johnny by kicking him in the cross, but then she comes back and hits Tommaso, and Johnny pulls out a cup to show that uh, she did actually hurt him, and he picks up the win. Right. Wow. Yep. And it, it's pretty cool, their hill turn is pretty cool, because it's like, they're the hills that don't believe they're the hills. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. I, I may not have liked that match, but I do like what it's come, what's come from it. What That's they accomplished it. with it, yeah. yeah. Anybody else want to give predictions, or is it just going to be us two? <laughs> Probably just going to be y'all. I don't know. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. So, uh, I next up, we... Yeah. Uh, next up, I we got Finn Rock Balor no versus Damian Priest. <laughs> Who Wait, say that again, because I just heard The Rock's going to win again. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, Finn Balor versus Damian Priest was actually all kind of a toss-up to me, honestly. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Well, I would be... So, since the last time I watched, I would just think Finn would win. But I know Damien was getting hot, though. Here, yeah, here. Is Finn still one as a heel, or are they trying to slowly yeah, turn him back? Finn's oh, not a heel. I, Finn is not, not a heel. He's not a face either, though. He's a tweener, right? And he's yeah, not he's a, a face. Thank you. He, he's a tweener. What they're doing with Finn in, in NXT is he's basically kind of like a stone cold. <laughs> he's, he's, he plays the heel side when they need him to. He plays the face side when they need him to because he's neither. You know what I'm saying? So, dude, you want to take the first line on this or you want me to give my prediction first? I'll give my prediction. I think Damian Priest is going to win, but I think it's going to be because Imperium gets involved. Oh, wow. Okay. I remember they were, so start- I- they were starting that up with Finn and Walter, but they had to drop it due to all this. But I feel like they're slowly starting to build back. I think they might slowly start to build back into that. All right, so I think we're kind of on the same page with that because I was thinking the same thing because I was like, okay, so the whole Imperium thing with Finn was going to be kind of cool, and then, boom, they shut it down because of the traveling and stuff. And then I started seeing the Imperium thing starting to bubble up again um, with them getting the tag titles and all this different shit, and I just see that clinic coming. The other thing, though, I'm picking Damian Priest for, and it's, it's a thin pick, is I really like – the whole line of um, him being the archer of infamy and him saying like, yeah, I, I want, eventually I'm going for the NXT title. He's like, but how could I pass up a target like Finn Balor? And he puts Finn over every time he talks about him, about how great he is and this and that, but then points out that's exactly why he has to fuck him up. I'm thinking Whoa. this is their, their they're getting ready to. They're getting ready to push him. So I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna call him his old name, Punishment Hernandez. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with yeah. Damian Priest. Yeah. Yeah. This will be a pretty big win for him if not. Here we go. All right. Oh, I'm no. curious to see what. You, 
Well, hold on. Let me ask Franco one thing. Do you think he's if Damian Priest win, will it be straight up? No, <laughs> that's me. But Franco, Franco, you there, buddy? Hey, hey, Frank. His ring lit up for a second. Maybe he was thought it got real good and then sure it might have died. Can hear us because his phone did that thing where his voice changed again. Yeah. Like. Okay, I think he just disappeared. Up oh, there he is. Franco. Sorry about that, Joe. Every time somebody calls my phone, it knocks the sound out for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Franco, my Maybe question to you was. Audio quality clears up too. Franco, my question to you was: Do you think Damian Priest will win straight up? No, I, I agree with um Suze. I think it's going to be some kind of weird interference, like an Imperium getting involved or something like that. But with he pulls the, out the nightstick again. Yeah, with the, I'm about to say, with the kind of character that Damian Priest plays, he'll take it any way he can get it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I could definitely see him pulling that nightstick out. Um, I thought, and it's, the other reason why I, I like I like him for the win is I thought that was pretty cool when they kind of interjected him into um, Dijakovic and... Um, Keith Lee's feud for a while because it kind of legitimized him as a big man, but it also gave him a good look as just kind of a possible main event or two. Oh, cool. Yep. That's another reason why I want to watch NXT, Keith Lee. That's the only other reason I want to watch NXT. Keith Lee is official, is my, which was funny because I used to say this about the dream, but Keith Lee is currently my favorite wrestler on NXT. Yeah. We will get to him in a second. Though. Yeah, Justin, you might want to give Keith Lee another look. Yeah, I'm I'm you. I was puzzle, on the same um, thing with that. A puzzle ring. Huh? What happened? Is that true? True said something about a puzzle ring. I think he's a talking puzzle about ring? <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm over Keith here, Lee, I'm when over he here first came, happening. I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of Keith Lee because I just didn't kind of, I didn't like the character. Um, But Keith Lee has changed. Really well, and Anthony can attest to this. Mm -hmm. I'm a big proponent of characters that I don't like who can legit change because I hated Velveteen Dream's character. Yeah, he did. Hated. I remember you and Eugene talking about him way back when. Eugene, I Eugene liked him. I fucking hated him. I was like, this is a bullshit character. It's weak. It's cheap. And I like what he did with the character. How he started to develop it, and he slowly dropped that ambiguously gay shit from it. Whereas he still has this air of flamboyancy princism to it. Yeah. And some flamboyancy. But it's he 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 interjected that he's all about the spotlight. You right. know what I mean? Right. And the fact that that man could put on a hell of a match, bro. Uh, uh, hell he, of a match. He, he, he definitely has the best the character work in WWE, second to maybe only Bray Wyatt right now. Yeah. If not better. I I'll I'm agree with that. Statement, sir. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'll agree with that. But yeah, finish but yeah, yeah Keith Lee. Yes. So Keith Lee, I'm 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 really riding along with him because he came in with this really arrogant character, but he was supposed to be a face, a uh, feast in my what was it? A uh, bask in my glory. Bask in my glory, and he would do the dumb shit with the thumb, and he talked no, to does this hairy voice. No, no, but hear me out. He still does it all. But it's different. I don't know if it makes sense to you, but he comes out, especially since he won the North American Championship. He comes out there, you know, he's willing to give anybody a shot at the belt. He's got yeah. this edge to him now. He still does the basketball glory, but there's a there's a point to it. There's you, a focus. You know, you, know what it, it, you know what it might be, Franco? Because he changed okay. his music. His music isn't the same as when he first came out. You might have started liking him once he changed his music. He had a little more different vibe to him once they changed that music. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I want to say when his music changed, he kind of changed up too. You right. You mm -hmm. absolutely right. I didn't well, even think I also about that. Feel like when he first came out, like because he was doing all that, but like not to say he was unproven, but like in like in NXT, like he had come out of nowhere, it was just like I'm this good and all that, and like yep. and then he was losing too. So like he was doing all that, but also hadn't proven himself or backed right. it up in any way. Suddenly, the music changed, and he starts, you know, actually showing off, like, oh, wait, no, he is as good as he says. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he's backing up the talk, and you can believe it when he what he says now. And the fact that his big ass is doing her in the doesn't hurt either. 
Oh, oh yeah. That's, yeah. that's why I'm <laughs> His match now, with Dijakovic at the last takeover? Oh, my God. Yeah. Is he on the card? And, and let me tell you something. I, that, I was not a fan of him and Dijakovic's feud when I first heard about it. Because I was like, how long can you watch two big plotting dudes wrestle? Right. But I honestly <laughs> feel like... <laughs> Well, what it was for me was that Keith Lee had already started to grow on me, but I felt like Keith Lee made Dijakovic step his game up. Yes. Oh, he, yeah, yes. he definitely did. I feel like the, it was both of them together. Like, they made themselves step oh, yeah. each other up. Well, I think the part for Dijakovic is Keith Lee could pull off more of the stuff he knew he could do because Dijakovic's a legit big, strong dude. So if Keith I mean, Lee wants to do a Hunter Karana... Exactly. So, and all that chemistry and stuff, it just played into it. I do feel like it went on a little too long, maybe one or two matches too long. But for the most part, it was a great few. Yeah. Uh, right, so we'll talk more question. about Keith Lee in a second because we got our next match on the card of Tommaso right. Champa versus Karrion Cross. Mm. Uh. So I gotta go carry I will go cross. first on this one. Sorry. I will go. I want to say to Tommaso Champa, right? Because I'm a huge Champa fan, right? Love Tommaso Champa. Everything he's going through, his beef with Johnny, anybody he gets into a beef with, it's always fucking good. But Carry Cross is the fresh face who just came in, and he's legit. Fucking hot as fire, yo. Okay, I was about right. to say who's carrying cross, because I don't even know who that is. You about to Great say him, he debuted like two weeks after that match we just told you about where Candace and Johnny both ah. Yeah, yeah. He has a really those, great gimmick. Uh, oh, wait, have you been see, have you seen those TikTok like doomsday uh vignettes that's been playing on NXT or no? No. Okay, then never mind. Then <laughs> those are about to say yeah. you catch up, those are him. Question who's that new dude yeah. like that reminds you of Dexter? The one that like almost feels oh, Dexter no Loomis. He's yeah. actually not that new. He's been there for a little bit. He's just yeah. Dexter right Loomis has been there for a while, um, but they just started really working on him. He's currently like my favorite new NXT guy. I just love his character. Yeah, he's, he's actually dope. an artist. My friend actually got art commission from them like a couple months ago. It's actually pretty cool. Is he? Is that the, is that the dude that has like the mustache and he wear the gloves? Yeah, the little, yep. like the weird. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. He was, and if you when they had that little breakout star tournament, I really liked yep. dude. He was different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what like was cool about him? I told uh, I told Eugene he reminds me of Brian Fury. <laughs> I ain't Fury <laughs> from uh, Tekken. Oh wow! But the back to the to the match though, I'm gonna go with Karrion Cross, aka mm-hmm. Killer Cross from the uh, Indies. If you don't know him, I'm gonna um, need somebody to think... put an image of who you're talking about in chat, please. Who, Dexter Loomis? <laughs> yes. I'll send it to you. All right, we'll find where to put him in there. I got you. Um, I got but you. Um, the smart move is to put Killer Cross over it and flesh this feud out. Oh, definitely. So I'm going to go with Killer Cross. I mean, um, Karrion Cross. Yeah, these, it's weird. It feels weird because we're kind of agreeing on all of the same matches. But, uh, yeah, no. Right. It's it's his first big match. Uh, I actually about to say, yeah, I think. Is it his first match or his first big match? I can't remember. Did, this is going to be his first big match. Okay, first big match. He's had a couple uh, little matches where, you know, he does the business to some lower guys. And... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, no. Here's an so, image of uh, Dexter Lewis. Hey, fellas. And, yeah. What's up? We What's just, we're hitting over two hours. So, I definitely want to finish the card out. And then after that, I want to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. We're almost done. I think right. there's, only, there's only about three more matches, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's not a lot to say about this one. It's very much that Carrion probably needs to win because he has all the momentum right now. Uh, we show starting uh, yeah, or just starting at seven. Uh, I think it's starting at seven. Uh, next up for the North American Championship, Keith Lee versus Johnny Gargano. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely watching this tonight. I, I, I need Keith Lee to keep that belt. I want Lee to keep it, but well, I be think Johnny's hat. gonna pick it up. Honestly. Yeah, he had it <laughs> it's so funny because I was. I was going to say Johnny Gargano. <laughs> so I guess it's safe to say that um, DIY is never coming back. No. DIY. DIY was never actually officially back. If you paid attention, 
they use them as DIY for specific things. Yeah, but we know that that's that's telling that's over with now. Yeah. Dude, uh, why would you bring back that right now when it did exactly what it was supposed to do? That was the longest fucking storyline that WWE has told in years. That, that was now, from you, beginning that was, to that end. Was Gargano and Tampa, right? Yeah, yep, yeah. that was their tag team. Okay, that's like yeah, literally every, everything I know yeah. about NXT. <laughs> man, I've been telling yeah. you, I don't know how long Justin Minnie get on that show, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, um... For me, I want to. I'm. I'm going to go with uh, Gargano because I feel like Gargano needs to go over on Lee once to legitimize Lee again as the North American guy, the guy to carry the belt as a face. Because Gargano's heel turn right now is at a point where he needs to do some ill shit to somebody who's a legitimate strong face. I think they'll put on a great match. Um, and is if I I might be remembering as well. Didn't Lee beat Gargano for the North American title? No, he beat Strong for the title. No. Yeah, he beat Roger Strong for it. I'm sorry. So, oh, no, Velveteen Dream beat Gargano for the North American title. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, I think Lee needs to drop it to Gargano to establish both their spots really good and either push Lee up into the main event card for now or to pick up a decent feud with them, a really good hill face feud. <laughs> So I'm a, yeah, I'm going to pick Gargano for this one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to extend the feud with this. Moving on to the next match, we have the NXT Women's Championship match between Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley, and Io Shirai. I'm going I'll with go Rhea first. on this one. Oh, I go ahead. Charlotte's go ahead. Still keeping it. Yes. I think, it's, I think yep. Charlotte's keeping it. I don't want her to, but I think Charlotte's going to keep it. I'm going to... You know what? This is the one match I can have an opinion on. I think Charlotte's going to drop it tonight because I think, in my personal opinion, because they let John Cena get all the way to 16 and they stopped being cold, I feel like the only one they're going to have beat Ric Flair's record is his daughter, and this is in that progression. She's going to lose it so she can come back and take either either uh, Asuka's belt. Bailey, yep. Cause as a matter of fact, isn't Oscar isn't Charlotte wrestling Oscar at Backlash? No, Nia Jax is. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So, but I do think that Charlotte's gonna lose it, so yeah. she can come back and either take yeah, Raw or SmackDown because she's at what? This makes twelve for her, right? Huh? I believe. Some so. of that area, thanks. So. Probably not. Y'all drink all that water? Yeah, this makes I twelve for her. Right. I don't Look think Charlotte might be someone right there. NXT Women's Champion at all. What's up? So, here's my reasoning. I'm going with Rhea Ripley because Charlotte Charlotte only got that title because Rhea Ripley couldn't travel with the travel ban and stuff. So, I think they're, they're going to try to rectify the whole stopping Rhea's momentum like they did and put it back, over, back on her. But my prediction is Rhea's going to – she's going to pin Io Shirai. Oh, yeah, they're not going to get anyone. They're probably not going to. With it being a triple threat, you're probably right. They're not going to let anyone get the legit pin on Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. That, that's my prediction. Yeah. Swerve prediction, though, is Io Shirai wins. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, she ain't bad, though. Swerve. Yo, no, she she's not. Bad. I wouldn't be mad if she won. I, yeah. I just honestly think they're going to try to keep Charlotte uh, as champion. Uh, and finally, we have Adam Cole versus Velveteen Dream in what they call a back a backlot brawl match, which is literally just they're fighting in the parking lot with cars surrounding the ring <laughs> with a ring in the center. Oh, who, hey, who, who, who Velveteen going against again? Adam Cole. He is the champion, baby. Baby. I want to I want to see Velveteen beat the living hot fire out of Adam Cole. <laughs> I do think this is it's about uh, time Dream's that, night. It's, yeah, it's, it's about time Dream get that belt. Yeah, like especially it's another one of those things where Adam Cole has just broken the record for longest reigning champion, and you know they like to take belts off people like very soon after they do that type of stuff. Yep. Uh, and not only that, there's not much more Cole can really do with the belt, in my opinion. Like he's pretty it's much like, done it all. Get it back. Undisputed is well established now. They don't. They no longer need belts. They they proved their point already. Yeah, they did. Like and even about to say, and even with all that stuff that happened with Dream a couple of weeks ago, like at 
I don't think that's going to be enough to hurt this match whatsoever. Speaking of NXT in the tag team division, yo, what happened to, um, oh, God, the others are pain. They're what's on Raw the now, I, I, and I, I, one of them I, is hurt. I know, I know they may watch now, but what's the deal with them? Where did, where, they just left out of nowhere. No explanation, no nothing. One yeah. of them got injured, so they're keeping them both off TV, which is what they do with tag teams most of the time. Oh, okay, gotcha. Which Since... is why you only ever see one of the, which is why you never see one of the Usos. No, 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 no. You just recently seen one of the Usos. He was actually in the match to get a a, a title shot. Well, you ain't well, going to true, ain't... but the other, but the other Uso was with him though. Cause no, he wasn't. Was no, he wasn't. Home. No, he wasn't. No, let's right, let me re- let me rephrase. Let me let me rephrase. They weren't like they weren't injured at the time, and though there was still so one of them. Is, which the one is night, They had a match, and the other Uso was in the match, which is what. So I'm saying, it's like one Uso gets injured, the other one's not on TV. Which one is currently injured? If that makes sense. Well, which one is injured right now, Jay or Jimmy? Uh, no, well, Jay just wrestled. Jimmy was gone. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I've because I've read about I've read about the injury. He said he might not be out for like a couple of years, based on where his injury is. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I saw a video. He was doing like uh, some physical therapy on his knee or something. Yeah, that just happened recently, like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. We'll see, we'll see him like probably 2022 then. Yeah. yeah the in- he picked up that injury like right after. Right. No, after but then that's what Anthony's injury. talking about because when they started yeah. the, when when yeah. Jeff well, the- got out, they had to do like this thing for yeah. the Intercontinental Tournament, and yeah. that's what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Jay was by himself. Yeah, yeah, by yeah. itself. So I don't know if you were talking about yeah. that. But, mean, the, but, this but, say, but the like, week afterwards, it had the other. But say yeah. But the week afterwards, they had the other three members, the ones that weren't in that match fighting. And then, no, no, no. You talking about something different? No, you're talking about something different. That's not what I'm talking about. You're talking about when they had John Morrison, uh, on, when each person wrestled, and then the next week the other people wrestled. That's not what I'm talking about. No, Literally like last week on SmackDown. Yeah, it was last week. It was last week. It was for the Intercontinental Tournament. Oh, yeah. I don't remember any of that tournament. <laughs> yeah, I watched it, which is sad. My bad. Yeah, yeah, that was that low ebb, and I disconnected. That's all right. Fun. And and they got what's his name by himself too right now, Otis. Oh yeah, yeah. they got Otis by himself for a minute though. Yeah. Yeah, because, I think uh, is it Tucker <laughs> injured? Uh, no, Tuck. They just had they've just separated them since he won the Money in the Bank title. And separate isn't even the right word. They just haven't been using Tucker. <laughs> I mean, yeah. one of them ended up break it as the breakout star. Yeah, yeah. And like the weird thing is, they're not separated; they're just not using Tucker. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, we didn't get first. We didn't hear your uh, vote for Cole versus Dream. <laughs> I'm just getting back, folks. Is uh, is Tucker? Is he um, out? Or are they just separating them? No, right they just now? haven't been using them, like I said. But Franco. Cole versus Dream for the title. I think it's Dream's time, baby. I think it's Dream's time. Um, Cole has now become the longest reigning NXT champion. Um, so I think they've, they've accomplished that. Now's the time to pull the trigger on Dream and let him carry the, uh, carry the brand. So I'm going to go with Dream. Oh my God, every single match except Io, Shirai, Charlotte, and Rhea Ripley, we've had the exact same reasoning. <laughs> <laughs> but now my question, do you think that they'll try to spark a grudge match back and forth between those two? Between who? The cha- the people going for the champion title. Uh, they've because they've been feuding so long. I feel like if they do another match, it's only going to be one more. Yeah, it'll Cole be a blow off feuding, match. Like Cole, let's say Dream has been feuding with Cole for like what the last two months. It feels like. Yeah, yeah. And if you He's really been think about it, that feud's been going on since he lost the damn North American title to Strong. Well, that's what I was going to say. That feud's been going on for a while actually, because remember he lost yeah. the, the title. And then he got injured, and he came back on the, you injured me. And then he was wrestling all the undisputed people. Then they introduced Dexter Loomis into it. And now we've gotten to the point where he's actually facing Cole. Yep. So, Like, he legit I think, went from going against Roddy to all of them to Cole. <laughs> like To Cole. Yeah, so, like I said, so I think it's time. goes on for one more match at most, and then it's done. Yeah, just the blow-off match, Cole's rematch, and I think that's going to be it. That, so, that is my prediction for that one. This is I, looking to be a very good takeover, in my opinion. Well, I'm actually, then again, so they're, all, my, they're all good, to be fair. Well, no, this is probably my second NXT pay-per-view I've watched. Shame on you. 
<laughs> bro, man, you should go back and watch the old ones, man. They got, bro, they are like all good. <laughs> Even a bad Look, takeover. Hey, Justin. Hey, Justin. What up? If you want to see how good an NXT pay per view is, go back and watch the pay per views that take place on WrestleMania weekend or like SummerSlam weekends. Every time they they do a paper a takeover. Was it, I think it was Takeover New York that I watched right before. Oh, Rangers trust me. Takeover last year. Every time they do a takeover before one of the big shows, they blow the big show out of yeah, 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 yeah. It was off the hook. Every time. It was nuts. Every time. I got to see a takeover. Was, yeah, I've been having issues with my mic all night. Yeah, oh, yeah. What the problem is. I would say for the last year, man, takeovers have probably beaten, been the best pay per views. I can honestly say I haven't seen a bad takeover. Yeah. Like there's been a bad match on there or a filler match, but, but for the most part, takeover. takeovers, every match is good. That's what's up. Well, I'm definitely yep. going to watch it tonight. I'm actually looking forward to it. A matter of fact, yeah. it's almost 6 30 now, so probably a good time to cut this short. Yep. Yep. Go get some We're food. Up. Yeah, I just lit the grill, so. All right, I want to thank anyone who's been here watching the Mighty Jade Empire podcast. I am DJ Justin Love. These are my boys, my brothers in arms. We're going to start with you, Anthony, right there over on there on the left. All right, uh, I'm going to take my last two minutes instead of plugging myself. This is what I want to say. Guys, make sure you comment. If you comment, we will respond to you on the next video uh, because often we never mention comments, so we want to put that out there. I just want you guys to personally comment to me. This ain't for y'all guys. It's for me. I was in my car. I was able to join the stream. I got in the house, jumped on my laptop, and jumped back in the stream. So it's kind of cool. All I'm going to say is I could do that with Cloud Gaming. I'm done. Oh, no. <laughs> I like anyway. the fact that you, you did that. I like that. I did. All right, go ahead. Who wants to go next? John, thanks for joining us. Who's next? Nice oh, hold up. My mic just died on me. We hear you. We hear you. What'd you say? I'm sorry. Oh, wait. Your mic? I thought your head was the mic. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's just a cue ball. Cue ball. There you go. No, I actually go the same thing as as that. I do think it's cool, and I've been said it was cool. In gaming, it just like you said, it ain't just a, ain't my steel, ain't my stick. I do think it's cool though, bro. I done told you that. Franco, where can people it. find you at? Who me? Yes, sir. You can find, you can find me, me. You can find me at work. <laughs> you can find me. Yeah, I about to say you can find me at Hilti and Dayton because that's where I work. But um, no, you can find me on Facebook under Franco Cochise Roberts. You can find me on Instagram under Nitty Mac. You can find me on Twitter under Nitty Mac. Uh, you can find me on PlayStation if you want to play some Destiny with me. I am the I am Burgotti Kid, not Bugatti Kid. Burgotti Kid. Um, and like Anthony said. Um, I definitely would like to see you guys comment. Um, and for me, not for everybody here, for me, I love answering questions. So if you, uh, if you got a specific question for me, definitely put it in the comments and I'll make sure if I don't see it, one of the guys see it and I'll give you a legit answer to it, whether it's wrestling, um, stuff going on with world affairs right now, or what you can ask me some shit I don't even know nothing about and I'll go find out about it. But there you got it. That's what it is. Right, you just slide it down. Eugene. Yo. Where can the people find you at? Oh, um, Twitch TV, YouTube, Legend 879. That's what it is. Jules, true. Anything you guys want to plug? Nope. Y'all catch me on this stream whenever you stream, Jackson, and I'm available. Uh, and whenever I'm not playing D&D on Sundays here on the podcast. That's what it is. Once again, this has been the Mighty Jade Empire Podcast. I'm DJ Justin Love. You can find me on twitch.tv slash DJ Justin Love. You can find me on the gram at DJ Justin Love. Facebook at DJ Justin Love. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be spinning sets a whole lot more. A whole lot more on uh, Twitch. You'll catch me Monday. Probably at 2 o'clock. Spinning right here on Twitch. Thanks for being here, y'all. We'll catch y'all later. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe.
And now, your mama knows.